We just pray for their families, for the people of Chattanooga, and we just know that God will be with them. Amen. And here to honor America by performing our national anthem, please welcome the winner of the Speedway Star Competition, 12-year-old Nicole Pelletier. Oh, the snow can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale voiceless fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. So yesterday, in the Xfinity race, it was Denny Hamlin, his teammate Kyle Busch, and Austin Dillon maybe trading a little paint. Will we see any repayment today on the racetrack? Well, I don't know that we're going to see repayment. We're certainly going to see a lot of aggressive action here because it is so hard to pass. Uh, you know, I think Denny Hamlin yesterday was very aggressive. He got into got into people three different times. One of those to win, was to win the race. He certainly didn't make any friends yesterday, but, you know, I don't think as far as payback, we'll probably see that, but we're going to see some aggressive driving. Oh, situations like this always made, always made me nervous because I'm not a driver. I'm not on the racetrack, so I would be going around this morning trying to get everybody to talk it out. Let, let's get our bygones be bygones. Let's make this a nice, clean race, give ourselves the best chance to win. I've always heard you turn better with eight tires than four, and it looks like Dan Denny used that yesterday in the Xfinity race. We'll see how aggressive the drivers get. The command's coming up next.
Guess we got a little off track But love knows a way back Through the storms and pouring rain Got my hands on the wheel and I'm flying Heartbeat loud as the thunder rolls Riding in on a stampede of lightning oh, I'm bringing back the sunshine Sun is shining on New Hampshire Motor Speedway as the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series about to take on the Magic Mile. Sprint Cup Series racing presented by Pixels. Clint Boyer behind the wheel, his buddy, as we saw in Countdown to Green, Blake Schilt here for today's race, as well as Manchester, New Hampshire's Adam Sandler, who will be making his third appearance as far as giving the command to fire engines. That's about to happen. So let's go trackside for the command to fire engines. It's going to be entertaining. Race fans, the moment has arrived. Here to give the command to start the 5 Energy 301, please welcome New Hampshire native and the star of the new movie Pixels, out in theaters July 24th, our very own Adam Sandler. Thank you! Thank you! This command is for all of you in New Hampshire and for all the troops overseas. Drivers! Start your engine! And there's no question that Adam Sandler brings the passion to the command to fire engines. 43 cars have come to life. The green flag coming up next.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Pixels in Theaters Friday. And by Sprint. Check out the new all-in plan at sprint.com slash all-in. Let's get the blob back. Who will hoist the lobster at the end of 301 laps from New Hampshire Motor Speedway? Want to take a look at our starting grid as the car is about to roll off of pit road. On the front row, Carl Edwards with his first Magic Mile pole. And first since 2013, he's next to two-time New Hampshire winner, Joey Logano. In row two, we have David Reagan and Kyle Busch. Row three makes up five New Hampshire wins. Two for Denny Hamlin, three for Kurt Busch. Three more wins accounted for with Jimmy Johnson. And in row five, we have two former winners here, Casey Kane, Brad Keselowski. Row six has our defending series champion, the four of Kevin Harvick. Starting 13th, that's the best starting position of the season for Landon Castle. Young man here looking to pull an upset today in 16th, Ryan Blaney. Starting 18th, this has to be one of his favorite racetracks, Clint Boyer, a two-time winner. Back in row 10, Danica Patrick and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who has seven top fives at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And let's see if we can hear from the driver of the four. Jeff, let's talk with Kevin. Hey, Kevin, it's Jeff up in the NBCSM booth. You with us? Four. All right, bud, it's gotten hot today. Uh, how do you think that weather, the increase in the temperature is going to affect the racetrack? Well, I really feel like the racetrack's probably going to widen out just because you're going to need options to uh, to make your car handle. So it's um, definitely more fun when it gets hot, that's for sure. And this is uh, still going to have the fastest groove right in the middle of the racetrack. But I think after 15 or 20 laps, you're going to start having to search around. OK, with the exception of the weather getting hotter, what is going to be the biggest challenge today? I think just track position. Uh, I think that's usually the name of the game here is to keep the best track position that you can. Uh, I think the handling of your car is, is going to be effective, but I still think it takes so long to pass people, uh, even even if you have a better car, that the leader just gets out there. So we're going to have to play the strategy uh, game right with our Jimmy John Chevy, but uh, hopefully we can get the handling good and have it all go our way. All right, man. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you. Well, he mentioned strategy, Steve, as you had brought up earlier. We're going to ride along with a few different drivers, one of those being Eric Almarola in the 43. He has the Smithfield in-car camera. He starts 29th. Ryan Newman in the 31 has the Quicken Loans on board. Jeff Gordon with the AARP in-car camera will start 23rd today. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Nationwide on board starts 19th. Clint Boyer with the five-hour energy onboard camera will start in the 18th position. Kevin Harvick with his Jimmy John's in-car camera starts 12th. And up towards the front starting 4th, Kyle Busch carries the sprint on board. Quite a few different stories that we will be following throughout this race. For more of those stories, let's go to Pit Road and Dave Burns. Rick, when David Reagan signed up with Michael Walter Bracing, he knew that the 55 car was fast. But crew chief Brian Patty told me this morning he had no idea how good they'd be here at Loudoun. He was very impressed when they qualified a season best third. And David Reagan has a real shot to make it into the chase today with a win at New Hampshire. Marty Snyder. Well, Dave, Connecticut native Joey Logano reminded me moments ago of all the tracks on the schedule, this is by far the most important to him. After all, he considers it his home racetrack. The one thing he's tired of, though, seconds. Last week, he finished second to Kyle Busch at Kentucky. In Friday in qualifying, he finished second to Carl Edwards. But there is one second he wouldn't mind. His second win of 2015, Logano told me, we have top five speed, probably enough to maybe even win the race. Kelly? Marty, last week, all four Joe Gibbs Racing drivers finished inside the top five, led by Kyle Busch, who picked up his second win in the last three races. But he still has to get into that top 30 in points to be chase eligible. Today, it looks like he'll be battling his teammates again as all four have qualified inside the top eight. Kyle starting fourth. His last win here in New Hampshire came in 2006, but he has finished runner up in three of the last four races here, Mike. Today, Denny Hamlin attempts to complete the weekend sweep after winning yesterday's Xfinity race. But because of the way he won it, he may have to go after today's race while looking over his shoulder, more specifically looking in his rearview mirror. 
That's because there was tension on the racetrack afterwards between his teammate Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon. I spoke with his crew chief Dave Rogers this morning and he said he urged Denny to text those two drivers and make amends so he didn't have to worry about it today. He told me that he's put things behind him with Kyle Busch, but as far as Austin Dillon, he doesn't know where things stand just as yet. He may have to worry about that this afternoon, Rick. Absolutely, Mike. As you just mentioned, we want to look back on yesterday's race in the Xfinity Series. This is what took place. Denny Hamlin in the 20 on the inside of his teammate, Kyle Busch. Yeah, and some of these things are because of what we talked about at the start of the show, is that you get very loose underneath the guy and you get into the side of him. But when you get into the side of somebody going for the win, you could have avoided that. He chose not to avoid that. Here's the problem. You didn't just have that incident with those two drivers. You had it with every driver that was watching the race. Because if you're willing to do that to win the race to, to Austin Dillon, then you're also willing to do it to another person. So you have to make amends to everybody. You can't run around saying, I'm sorry to everybody. But by your actions, you have to say, hey, I'm going to race you correctly. Yeah, you have to be very careful. Your actions speak louder than your words. Don't tell me how you're going to race me. Show me. Well, he showed yesterday what he's willing to do to win a race. All right, want to take a closer look at New Hampshire Motor Speedway with today's Pixel track facts this racetrack just over a mile the banking almost non-existent two degrees to seven degrees of progressive banking and the front stretch and back stretch both 1500 feet our race facts we have 301 laps it'll be over 318 miles 45 miles per hour is the pit road speed and it's a tough pit road to negotiate and then the fuel window 78 to 83 laps Steve that seems a little bit wide well and I don't even think that's wide enough these teams on pit road know that strategy is going to be important no one's going to show their hand no one's really sure how far these guys can go some are on the shorter side but I think 83 is conservative some guys are going to stretch it farther than that Carl Edwards, after winning the poll on Friday, will bring the field to the green flag on his inside, the 22 of Joey Logano. As they come out of turn number four, fans are on their feet here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Green flag is in the air. Jeff, as we see them two by two, working through one and two, and now into three and four, where's the preferred line early in this race? Well, I, on restarts, I want to be on the outside. We saw Kyle Busch clear Logano. Logano got a bad start, didn't get moving. But even with that, Kyle Busch was able to roll on the outside. So if I have a choice, I'm going to pick the outside. Denny Hamlin stuck on the inside. He'll slide in behind the 41 of Kurt Busch. Just behind him, Matt Kenseth in the 20. And now Kenseth looking to the inside of his teammate Denny Hamlin as they go into turn number three trying that lower line. Joe Gibbs racing has been incredible over the past few races. No team has ever won three races in a row at this racetrack. Penske is looking to do that. They were able to win the two races in 2014. And you see the 20 or the two of Brad Keselowski just behind his teammate the 22 of Joey Logano who's running up in the third position and you see how difficult it is Jimmy Johnson's underneath the 11 of Denny Hamlin Jimmy Johnson in the 48 got there took position he's underneath the 11 you see him slide up the racetrack very hard for Jimmy Johnson to complete this pass actually makes a little contact with the 11 off turn four I think Denny said okay that's enough we're, we're early enough I'm going to go ahead and let you go well it looked like Denny almost caught the wall it juts out a little bit because of the safer barrier in turn number four he didn't have a lot of room and the 48 was coming up and got into the inside. We talked a lot about restarts. This first initial start of the race was pretty orderly. I don't think we're going to see that all day long, but that's the difference. These guys that race on Sunday, they know they have 301 laps in this race. It's, it's going to be hard to win the race at the start, but you can definitely lose it, and all these guys know that. They're taking their time, getting into position, feeling their cars out. The weather, much different today than yesterday. They need to take a few laps to see what they have. They spent almost two hours yesterday in practice trying to figure out the race setup, but it was quite a bit different because it was Quite a bit cooler yesterday than it is today and the sun beating down on this racetrack. Kurt Busch was able to get by David Reagan in the 55 and Matt Kenseth in the 20 tucked in behind David Reagan. And we see the guy, you know, guys running side by side. But to Steve's point, you know, these guys, these race car drivers, they're smart. They know it's a long race. Uh, watch Jimmy Johnson underneath the 11. He gets up the racetrack a little, a little bit, not a lot, 
The 11 gets really close to the wall and can't turn anymore, and there's the 48, so they touch. No big deal. That's just part of the race, and I don't think anybody's upset about that, and certainly no damage to the car. You see how close the 11 was to the wall. He couldn't go any higher. There's nowhere else for him to go. Matt Kenseth able to get by the 55 of David Reagan. Now Jimmy Johnson will try to figure a way to maneuver around David Reagan as he looks just to the inside as they go across the stripe and into turn one. David Reagan's one of the cars I'm going to have my eyes on all day long. In practice, why he didn't go out and run that fastest lap like some of them did early in practice, he was very consistent. 5, 10, 15 lap averages. That 55 car seemed to have pretty decent balance. When I spoke to Brian Paddy this morning about what he thought the track was going to do, I loved his answer because it was as honest as it could be. The only thing Sunshine helps is for good racing. He said it doesn't make for better handling. <laughs> It makes for more of a headache for a crew chief, I would guess, because the driver is going to be complaining, why is the car not handling like it was yesterday? I've learned over the years that drivers really only complain the loudest when the cars behind them get bigger. <laughs> if the cars behind them get smaller, that's a good sign. But you see here, Jimmy Johnson, his car seems to be driving pretty well. He turns right underneath the 55. He's, he's kind of stayed down low all the way down the back stretch. Let David Reagan know, hey, I'm going to try to position myself there rolls the bottom of the racetrack but we see again just how easy it is David Reagan does a great job of carrying the momentum off the second group and David Reagan doesn't give him the preferred line you know, David Reagan goes in the corner in the line that he wants to be in and that's what's unique about this racetrack also is that you with, with a car underneath you you can still be where you want to be where the banking is you run your line and it, it forces the guy trying to pass you onto the line with less grip so David Reagan didn't do anything wrong he crowded Jimmy Johnson but he still ran the line he's run every single lap. So Jimmy Johnson has to expect that. He knows that's where he's going. That's the advantage of the second group having more, more bank. Just inside the top 10, Denny Hamlin running in the ninth spot, Mike. You know, this morning as I did my homework, Rick, I stopped by the 11 camp, and while Dave Rogers was just planted besides that car all morning long, lots of deliberation trying to find the right setup. So far, though, the car's not perfect. Very tight on entry, and Denny says he just can't put the throttle down. Marty? Mike out front is teammate Carl Edwards, and he said he's noticed that the lap times are a little bit slower. The car feels fantastic, though. How might they cure the slower lap times? He asked Darian Grubb. Here's what he had to say. Anybody? People might have the lap time start to drop. Just keep us posted if you ever do try it. We'll let you know if it helps you. Okay, 10 4. Yeah, just a little slower. 10 4. Right now you're running 49. The warmer weather, and we saw shifting here last year. So, Steve Letard, if I'm a race fan thinking home, I'm like, we're in New Hampshire. It's a mile track. Why in the world would the teams shift? Well, you're absolutely right, Marty. I expect a majority of the field to shift later into the run, especially with the sunshine and the slower lap times. This year, NASCAR has reduced the rear gear, so it's reduced the RPM that these race cars are turning. So between that and the restricted engines, you have the opportunity as a driver in the middle of the corner when you're going the slowest to reach over, downshift into third gear. It brings the RPMs up and gives you that a little bit better, straighter, more aggressive drive off the corner. The most important reason Darian Grubb wants to know is not only so we can give you lap time, but that fuel mileage is going to go down dramatically when that driver decides to use both third and fourth gear. Out in front, all 12 of the laps run. Carl Edwards, right. impressive. We'll be right back with more from Loudon, but first, a special look at the new movie Pixels in Theaters Friday.
Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Carl Edwards in front of Kyle Busch by about two tenths of a second. Kyle Busch has definitely closed the gap that Carl Edwards had established after the start of this race. Joey Logano running third, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, the top five. Yeah, we've been hearing that the 19 of Carl Edwards has gotten loose getting in the corner. That means he can't carry the corner speed that he wants to get in the corners, but it also messes up your entry a little bit. It messes up your rhythm of where you want the car to be so that as the corner continues, you can continue putting that car where you want to be. Corner entry is everything. If you have trouble getting in the corner, it messes the entire corner up. Carl, we're going to make it three wide right here. Carl Edwards got up behind the 98 of Timmy three Hill. Right it was three three wide. Right. Pass for the lead. Kyle Four. Busch to the inside. Can he make it stick? Carl Edwards has to get out of the gas. Kyle Busch, the new leader at New Hampshire. Good work. That was a textbook move on how to work lap traffic. Entering turn one, Kyle Busch saw that Carl Edwards was going to have to turn under a lap car. He paused, waited a minute before he got into the throttle, rolled a little bit longer. So when he got the throttle, it was one time, very direct, good straight shot off, knowing he would have a run to the bottom. And it's a great example of what momentum means. When, when Carl got underneath the lap car, it slowed his effort down. He couldn't go to the throttle as quickly. And you could see Kyle behind him. He ran his normal line, was able to get in the gas, made it easy three wide to clear him. Kyle Busch has won at this racetrack before in the Cup Series, but it was nine years ago, back in 2006. He has been able to get to victory lane in the Xfinity Series a few times here. So he has success at this racetrack, and he needs it because, as we mentioned before, he needs to get into the top 30 in points if he wants to be eligible for the chase the last 10 races of the season. So we see Kevin Harvick making the move on Jamie McMurray. Harvick in the four, McMurray in the one. And the caution comes out on lap 22. Debris in turn one. Debris in turn one, as we just heard. So restarts. As you mentioned, Jeff, the restarts will be very interesting at this racetrack. Now we have 22 laps on our tires. Things have warmed up a little bit. People maybe have jockeyed for position enough to find out that it's hard to get those passes. Let's do it when we're right up next to each other on a restart. Where we're going to see a combination of, of no stop, maybe no stops. We're going to see a combination of two tires, maybe four tires. We're going to see all kinds of stuff here. So when you drive into turn one for the first time, this is the first time you've done it, and the track's slick and hot. So the restarts are the, the most are the most advantageous place to get a position, but it's also the most dangerous way to get into a wreck. I mean, the decision now is do you come? You can run 80 laps on fuel, you're 20 laps into a run. I want to stay on the racetrack, but that's assuming you're going to have a caution before you run out of gas. So the leaders are going to stay, but there's going to be a break point. Somebody's going to pit. We see right here, first taker, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, about 10th on back, hits pit road. Keselowski was running sixth. Denny Hamlin was ninth. Casey Kane, Kevin Harvick, a lot of drivers taking this opportunity to come onto pit road. We'll recap this pit road when we come back.
Watch a live stream of every Sprint Cup Series race with NBC Sports Live Extra. It's available on your laptops, tablets, smartphones, and connected TVs. NBC Sports Live Extra brings you closer to every race. Brad Keselowski will restart this race ninth. Jamie McMurray eighth. McMurray didn't come to pit road. Brad did. We're going to talk about this all day long. Do you pit? Do you not? The 48 went from eighth to seventh by staying out. Jamie McMurray, the last guy in old tires. Brad Keselowski only lost four spots to get two tires. Will it pay off? We're going to have to watch the restart and see if Brad can move forward. Kyle Busch restarts on the outside. Carl Edwards on the inside. Two and three wide through one and two. We talked about how calm the first start of the race was. Well, that's over. Now these guys have a strategy. You have to protect. You have to be aggressive early because you know cars behind you are coming with newer tires. Joe Logano working to the inside. David Reagan. Logano up to fourth. Kyle Busch leading his brother Kurt Busch got to second in front of Carl Edwards. Edwards drops back to third. Here comes the two of Brad Keselowski. A two tire change for Keselowski. Does it give him an advantage over the 48? Marty. And the move for Brad Keselowski, they were monitoring how many cars stayed out behind him. It was just two tires, and you see him going underneath Jimmy Johnson to try and get that spot. We'll see if those two tires pay off. Joey Meyer said his spotter afterwards, he said, hey, only four cars behind us stayed out, and we got those two fresh tires. This should pay off. Kelly? Well, track position means everything here at Loudon. So Kyle Busch stayed out under that last caution. He said the 18 is pretty good, although there's a little bit chatter of chatter in the rears. He said he can keep it mostly under control, though. Mike? Jeff Gordon was saying his car was awfully tight, needed a little bit of drive off. So on the last pit stop, they made an air pressure adjustment. Right side tires only in Sunoco race field for Gordon. Dave? Clinton Boyer pitted for four tires. He said, I am chattering the right front. This car is tight. And Clint should know what a good feel is around this track. He's won here twice, and they're trying to get it right for him early on. Kevin Harvick, he's the highest scored driver that came to pit road. He's currently running seventh. The 18 of Kyle Busch out in front of his brother Kurt Busch. They just mentioned this on the radio under the caution. Hey, when I have all the switches I need, uh, I'm seeing red on bolts. Under yellow here? No, under green. Under yellow, I've got everything modulated where I'm above red. 10 4, 10 4. Keep an eye on it. If it's one of those you can uh, get rid of for a little bit, we'll do that, and then we'll check some numbers here. That could be concerning. What Kyle Busch is explaining is when I'm running under green with all my switches on that runs the brake fans, the helmet blower, the air conditioner, everything you need to run and run competitively, he's seeing red on the voltmeter. These gauges are programmed to flash red when, when they have a warning. We're assuming it's low volts. That would tell me as a crew chief, about every 15 or 20 laps, I want to remind him about that, ask him again to make sure we're not losing voltage. Perhaps the alternator's not charging the battery. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. Move to the inside of Denny Hamlin. He'll take that spot away. He's going to bring his teammate Casey Kane in the five with him. Yeah, we've seen the 11 going backwards here. You know, he's not had a good start of the race. He got a good qualifying spot, uh, but he's all the way back to 11th and under, under battle for 12. So he's got something. His car's not handling near like he did yesterday. Been going the wrong way. Dylan Hart Jr. up to 11. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate just in front of him in 10th. Jimmy Johnson stayed out on the track. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came that most recent caution. You see Dale Jr. trying to turn underneath the 48. When he did, he got all the way on that flat and just very little grip there. The only way you can pass a guy there is if they make a mistake or if they're just not a good handling car. The 88 actually never touched the 48, right. but kind of packed the air underneath him and moved the 48 up the racetrack. Nice move. And Dave Burns, the 48 seems to be backing up. Well, and right there, he didn't touch him. I mean, that sure looked like he got into the back end of the 48 right there, did Dale Earnhardt Jr. But Jimmy now moves back another position, and that's because the car is tight in the center. In fact, they called it from the spotter stand early on. Looked like others were rolling the center better than our car, and that's certainly true as Jimmy Johnson continues to lose positions. He'll look forward to pitting and getting some adjustments. Jeff, that pass that we just saw, is that the way you get by somebody? He didn't, he didn't hit him. But he definitely took the air off of that you car. Seen him get, get right up behind the 48, but he's never made, never, well, actually did make contact. He got to him early, 48 started up the racetrack a little bit, but the 48 was heading up the racetrack anyway. So right here you can see the 48 lose, and then, then the 88 gets into him. So 
Yes, he did get into him, but that wasn't why he got by him. Here's what the 48 had to say. We need to start hitting people like that in the center to get by him. Yep, well, let TJ know that I know how to pass now. <laughs> and TJ Majors is the spotter for the 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And you're going to hear this all day. I know they're teammates and they have to respect one another, but the 88 is on newer tires, and Dale Jr. feels that he has to go, and his patience are up with his teammate. That's why he's going to – I don't think he went in there with the idea that he was going to hit him, but you have to be that close to make that pass, and you heard the frustration in Jimmy's voice that he felt that they were too aggressive too early, but now you have another teammate behind him with Casey Kane in the five. And we continue to use the word teammates. Isn't that normally in practice qualifying the week building up to the race? Once the green flag flies, these guys are out there for themselves. They want to win the race for their team. Well, you do, but at the same time, you don't want to win the race at the expense of your teammate. You need to understand that, that there needs to be a certain level of respect and a certain level that you race your teammates. But at that time, that level is a moving target right. because there's times where you have to drive against your teammate very difficult. As a crew chief, there's times you have to be creative with your pit strategy trying to beat your teammate. Maybe not 35 laps into the race of a 301-lap race to put the bumper to your teammate. Well, it's a long race. Try to pass the cars <laughs> as soon as you can. And we heard Jimmy say, now I know how to pass the 88. Kyle Busch in front of the field here at the Magic Mile. Welcome back to NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Racing from New Hampshire, presented by Pixels. We'll take a look at some of Jeff Gordon's milestones brought to you by AARP. He is the only driver to start every race here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. You see on the column on the right, first in every category except wins. And the guy that is first in wins is actually standing right next to me. Jeff Burton has four wins. Jeff Gordon with three at this track. He has already moved up 11 positions, and the last lap was the fastest lap turned. And that's Jeff Gordon. He's running in 12th. Yeah, these changing weather conditions really, I think, suit Jeff Gordon's style. 
he, he, you know, when I have crew chief form, he was more than frustrated on all those Saturday practice where the weather didn't match Sunday. We would go out, we would be average on speed, and he would just keep reassuring me we're going to be okay. You know, a veteran driver like Jeff, when the weather conditions change drastically, he's normally very good about searching for grip and also communicating what he needs to his crew chief. Kyle Busch out in front. He has a 1.8 second lead over his brother. As a matter of fact, three races ago at Sonoma, they finished one and two, just like this. The 41, again, 1.9 seconds now behind his brother. Mike? Uh, Kurt, though, not real happy with his race car, although he is running toward the front, saying he's tight in, loose off, and getting looser. He said he needs to turn the track bar back to zero so that he can roll the center. Keep in mind, the 41 did not stop under that first caution, so expect him to make significant adjustments next time down pit road. Me meanwhile, Denny Hamlin is a guy who did come down pit road to make adjustments. Initially on the day, he had a tight race car. They made a very slight air pressure adjustment, and now a little bit loose in three and loose off of turn number four. They took right sides only on that pit stop as well. He also says he's developed a bit of a chatter on the front end. Yeah, that chatter on the front end, that's just the front tires not turning. Their front tires will actually feel like they're hopping a race across the racetrack a little bit. Drivers hate tire chatter because it seems like there's no way to get it fixed, and it's hard to it's hard for crew chiefs to understand what makes tire chatter. But you'll hear people today see the Ford making a move on the outside of the 20. I think the 20 of Matt Kenseth just said, "Hey, look, you're quicker than me. It's early in the race. I'm gonna let you go." But that rear that the tire chatter is very frustrating. It's worse in the back of the car. When you have rear tire chatter, it's really hard to manage. At least in front tire chatter, you're just the car is tight and you just try to drive through it. So Kevin Harvick made the pass on the outside. Are we going to see that very often today? I don't think we're going to see that very much. A move on the outside is very tough to pull off here, except for on a restart. We saw the 88 just get by the 20 of Matt Kenseth. The four of Kevin Harvick running in the seventh spot, Marty. Hey, Rick, how's the AC up in the booth? I'm just curious. Comfortable, comfortable. It's, uh, it's warm down here, over 90 degrees. And I was talking to Rodney Childers earlier today, and he said yesterday was just one of those hair pull out your days for a crew chief. It was 70 degrees, nice and cool here. You see Brad Kozlowski go around, his teammate Joey Logano, and it was so cool here yesterday that he didn't know which way to adjust the car. Do you adjust it for comfort, or do you try to find speed when it's 70 degrees? So, Steve, tell us how hard it is for a crew chief. 90 plus degrees today, 20 degrees warmer than yesterday. How do you adjust your car when practice is 20 degrees cooler than race conditions. Well, Marty, that makes it very difficult because just like you mentioned, the question is, do I want to make my car go faster if the weather conditions don't equal what they're going to be on Sunday? The most important thing when the weather conditions are that far off is to go through your checklist. I'm sure Rodney Childers had a very long checklist of trying a couple different adjustments, perhaps working on his fuel mileage. There's a lot to go into these races more than just a fast race car. And I think that's one of the strong suits of the four of Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers is they seem very confident in one another and they don't panic. They go through their checklist, even though it may not seem like they're making gains on Saturday, they always show up on Sunday. Yeah, another team we normally see that from is the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss, but today since the restart they have been falling back and we've been watching there's a group of cars stacked up behind the 48 car and there's been a lot of stuff being created by that. It's, uh, eventually all this will have to get sorted out but we're going to see a replay of the, the 48 trying to get off the corner and the 41, 42 rather he is just sideways trying to lay the throttle down to drive underneath him but look at all the cars stacked up behind the 48. He's holding that entire line up because his car just won't handle. Here's a view of it from Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman pops him. Off they go. Let him, let, let him off the hook, though. And Ryan Newman has dropped back to 21st. And Ryan could have stayed in the gas there. He could have just stayed in the gas and spun him on around, made a caution, made a wreck. But Ryan made a mistake. He saw the 42 get loose. He got into the back of him, got off the throttle, and let everybody get collected. Heard the spotter saying everything looks okay. Kyle Bush, Kurt Bush, one and two. And it's Carl Edwards, Brad Keselowski, and Joey Logano. They are the top five. Kevin Harvick, Gail Earnhardt Jr., David Reagan, Matt Kenseth, Jamie McMurray. As we see Carl Edwards, who is the pole winner, trying to get by the two of Brad Keselowski. And remember, Brad Keselowski came onto pit road on lap 23. He is the highest scored driver that came to pit road.
NASCAR on NBCSN. Brought to you by Pixel. You're welcome. In theaters everywhere, July 24th. Game on. Want to look at our sprint widget. Points behind 30th as he's running on the track, just 53 now. Presented by Sprint. Follow at Miss Sprint Cup on Twitter now for a chance to win an autographed hat from today's victory lane. Kyle Bush has gained 34 points on 30th as they're running on the track. Brad Keselowski was able to get by Kurt Bush. He made the pass to get second. Now, with those fresher tires, he's trying to reel in Kyle Busch, who's 1.3 seconds in front of him. Carl Edwards has the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. all over his back bumper. We saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. earlier in the race get by the 48, his teammate. Now he goes by the 19 of Carl Edwards. As we mentioned earlier, there was initially we didn't think there was contact then after watching a few of the different replays we thought there were now let's NBC it as we close in and see if there was any contact I should have trusted my instincts Rick my initial thought was no contact I was right they then never got, touched and I was wrong the second time but yep. what's funny is 48 thought he got touched right. right that's what we're talking about the 88 ran up behind him never touched him just ran the air pushed the air up behind the, 80, the 48 and he thought he actually got touched but he never got touched and we know Chad Knaus has a monitor on his pit box that he watches the broadcast so we'll see if he conveys that information that there wasn't actually contact there or if he just I'm, lets his I'm driver thinking, stay I'm not stay Which, a little bit on edge sometimes a, a mad driver is a great driver but uh, <laughs> the 48's kind of been falling back in the race so he's probably mad enough anyway. The two of Brad Keselowski was 2.2 seconds behind Kyle Busch when he took over second position on lap 58. And now he has closed the gap to the point where he is on his back bumper. So as a crew chief, are you looking at this saying, all right, two tires definitely the way to go as far as handling for these cars? You no, know, as silly as this may sound, I'm going to I'm going to say the opposite, because when I look at the scoring monitor in the top 10 we have four cars that took right side tires but six cars that stayed out so I'm looking at while Kyle Busch has been run down by Brad Keselowski he hasn't got around them yet and I see Kurt Busch in third Edwards Logano Kenseth David Reagan all with no tires staying in the top 10 so I'm actually looking at it the opposite I'm looking at staying on the racetrack gaining track position has helped these guys as long as you have a good car because when I look down at the 48 Jimmy Johnson 16th it hasn't worked as well for them and that's the point we talk about the brake line all the time the last guy on old tires it's a it's a tough battle for him the fastest car on the racetrack right now is Kevin Harvick and Kevin Harvick we heard him before the race when we interviewed him we talked about you know the racetrack and how slick it was going to be he talked about changing the line talking about the tracks going to widen out because it's so slick well, watch what he's doing in three and four when he gets down into the corner he has moved up the racetrack a mile Gets in the corner about like everybody else, but watch what happens right here. Up the racetrack. Look how high he is. And watch how high he exits the corner. He has changed his line. There's, we haven't seen that all day. As we go for the lead, Brad Keselowski will take it away. Kyle Busch. Those two drivers in the Xfinity Series have won the last six races here, and now it looks like they're keeping that success going on Sunday in the Sprint Cup race. If this isn't all just new tires, I don't think. I, we saw a lot of speed from Keselowski in practice as well. New tires are helping him for sure, but you know we saw speed out of this car in practice as well. Marty, you got some? Well, I think it's going to be interesting because I think these crew chiefs may disagree with Mr. Latard on whether or not these two tires work. Joey Meyer, a spotter, made sure he noted that took us 40 laps to go from ninth up to the lead for Brad Keselowski. He hasn't said a word on this radio the entire run. The only thing he said the run before this, it is excellent from the middle of the corner off. Excellent was the word he used. And you mentioned Kevin Harvick's line a minute ago, Jeff. He moved up the racetrack. In fact, Tab Boyd, the spotter for Joey Logano, said, man, he is incredible on that high line. I didn't know you could do that at New Hampshire. The, the, the line changes in New Hampshire all the time. We've seen being at a run the very bottom's the best, being at a run the very top's the best. Off of turn four, for some reason, I can't, to be honest with you, I can't describe it. There's a lot of grit, some races leaving high. So 
Kevin Harvick's got it figured out. He's making good lap time. Let's watch and see what he does. You can see the, 40, the, the uh, 41 in front of him of Bush. See how much higher he is right here in the middle of the corner? But the key is he's not turning left and like trying to run the bottom. He's continuing the high line on the exit. That allows him not have to put wheel in the car. That doesn't de-wedge the car, meaning it keeps weight on, on the tires. He wants to keep the weight on it. And it helps him on, through the middle of the corner as well as the throttle. We've completed 69 laps. My crew chief tells me that 78 to 83 is our pit window. We've got green flag stops coming up. Welcome back to New Hampshire Motor Speedway and the Five Hour Energy 301. Get the ultimate pass to every moment of every NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race with Race Buddy. Choose from multiple HD feeds of different drivers. You can follow the race action with a live leaderboard. Tune in at NASCAR.com forward slash Race Buddy. If you're following Brad Keselowski, you've got a pretty good vantage point as he is leading at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. He has Kyle Busch behind him, about a second back. Kevin Harvick. Kurt Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the top five. Kyle Busch and Kurt Busch will have to be coming to pit road here very shortly. They did not pit on lap 23. We see the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. get by the one of Jamie McMurray. Now David Reagan, as Carl Edwards has made his way onto pit road in the 19. And the 19 will make it all the way down to pit stall number one as he was the pole winner. Marty? Rick, that's a long way at pit road speed, let me tell you, for Carl Edwards. And his car hasn't been that bad early in the run, but then late in the run, it got way too tight. In fact, he went down on the track bar, up on the track bar, 9.4 by his adjustments because they went the full fuel run here. It'll be four tires. You see Darian Grubb calling the shots here, and he'll leave pit road. The green flag pit stops have begun. Mike? Matt McCall taking his cues from Jamie. Jamie McMurray coming down pit road now. He's been a little bit tight rolling the center. Expected four tire change here as they've not made a stop all afternoon so far. They work on the right side. An air pressure adjustment also to help him with the corner. A full load of Sudoku race fuel for McMurray. 
So now the big question is, these guys, they have to pit the 1, the 19. We're going to be looking at Kyle Busch here pretty soon. David Reagan has peeled off the banking. He's on pit road. If you have fuel on board, do you follow these guys on pit road, or do you stay a little longer? 55's on pit road, Dave. David Reagan did not pit yet. He fell back to 10th. He said, I'm way too loose when the car is free rolling. So let's try to tighten him up. Wrench going in the rear window for a wedge adjustment. Four Goodyear tires and full of Sunoco fuel. Full, just in case they have to go another full run. They got to stay at 45 miles per hour on pit road. The question now for Keselowski, he, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be watching the speed of Carl Edwards. How fast can he go on new tires? If he can't go a whole lot faster than you go on older tires, then you're going to stay out. But if they're picking up a lot of speed, you're going to be forced to pit a little bit earlier than you would have, because if not, they're going to gain so much track position on you. So that's what the, that's what's going on right now. Everybody's watching this 19 car to see how fast he can go. Still waiting for the 18 of Kyle Busch, the 41 of Kurt Busch to duck on the pit road, as well as Joey Logano, Matt Kenseth. And there's Matt Kenseth, Dave. Kenseth was running eighth. That's where he started, so really didn't make any ground. That's because his car needed more front grip, and he complained that it was just about what it was like in practice. Started a little bit free, and then went to the tight side near the end. They'll make a four-tire change, air pressure adjustment, full of Sunoco fuel. I tell you what, Jeff, what helps that decision for Brad Kozlowski is he is unbelievably fast. Here comes Kurt Busch. He decides to make his way onto pit road, headed at Mike. His crew chief Rick told me this morning that they've been very good on long runs throughout the course of the weekend. They've certainly had one here. This is their first pit stop of the afternoon. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, take a half a pound out of each of the left side tires to try to help him. He was a little bit loose off. Marty? Logano fell from second to six on that run. He was a little tight in the center early in the run, but he had been keeping up with it with a track bar adjustment inside the car. It's an air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment trying to loosen up that car just a little bit. He also said when he got down on the apron, that made the car a little bit looser as well. They cleaned the grill, barely get it clean, and he leaves with four fresh Goodyear tires. And here comes the 11 of Denny Hamlin. We just heard from NASCAR the 20 of Matt Kenseth was too fast exiting. He'll have to come back to pit road. Mike. Denny Hamlin's been saying he's been tight on throttle. He's going to make a four-tire change, fuel and air pressure. You can also see the wedge wrench now going in the rear window on the left side. They'll make that chassis adjustment as well for Hamlin. Kyle Busch running second will come in to make his first pit stop of the day. He said he's just a little tight in the center, a little free on entry. He's been working the track bar. Last night they had a miscommunication on whether to go for two or four tires in the Xfinity race. You'll see he's going to get four good yards. Good your tires and packed with Sunoco fuel here for the 18. And so the 18 coming off of pit road. The 20 was too fast entering on pit road. So that was the violation that he had. He will have to serve that. And, and we talked about this. The decisions have to be made. Brad Keselowski, why he has a comfortable lead in the race. You know, the 19 of Carl Edwards has consistently run faster than the two by three, four, five tenths of a second. Dave. Jimmy Johnson hits the first pit stall in. He'll get adjustments for a race car that was loose into three, tight in the center, and a little bit loose off. He fell from seventh to 16th on that run, looking for some fresh Goodyear tires, Marty, and Sunoco fuel. And Dave, to Steve's point, Cole Pern noticed that, that the 19, a little bit faster on those fresh tires. So Martin Truex Jr., the first of those guys who pitted at lap 23 to come down pit road, he'll take on four fresh Goodyear tires and a load of Sunoco fuel, a little too tight for Truex. It was a wedge and air pressure adjustment to loosen him up. There's Matt Kenseth serving a penalty, too fast entering pit road. Behind him, Ryan Blaney in the 21. Already the fourth speeding penalty for Matt Kenseth. Mike. And Ryan Newman has been loose in tight center and loose off. They're going to make a chassis adjustment, four tire change, Sunoco race fuel. Pretty much full service on this 31 car, trying to give Ryan Newman a little bit of a better feel here. Finally get their stop completed. And to be clear, the guys that haven't pitted yet, what they're doing right now is they're hoping for a caution. Because if they can get a caution, they can trap all these guys a lap down. They're giving up a little bit of speed. He's this time. He's this time. And you hear the two, Brad Keselowski's coming this time. Cole Pern in the 78, he made this call. He has newer tires, yet he says, I'm going to stay on the strategy. I'm going to come to pit road. That's forcing Brad Keselowski and the other guys with newer tires. They can't afford to lose any more time. Because if it does cycle through, you'll lose five, six, seven seconds just on this fuel run. Brad Keselowski. Two reds. 
be giving up the lead to Kevin Harvick. And now we've got the 15 on pit road, Dave. Clint Boyer on this one was a lot better. He raced from 37th start restarting position to 25th. He'll get an adjustment now for a race car that is a little tight in the center, but a whole lot better, Marty. Matt Kozlowski coming down pit road. Paul Wolf from London. They busted several drivers so far for speeding on pit road. Be very careful with that. He said the car was very good. A tiny bit loose and shattering the tires at the end of the run. But please don't make any big adjustments. So it's just air pressure and clean the rear for Brad Kozlowski. You see Kevin Harvick pitting as well. Four tires for Harvick and a little left side wedge as well. Harvick's car a little bit too tight at the end of that run. And now that's the second time that Brad Keselowski has been on pit road and the team has performed admirably where he had problems a week ago at Kentucky on pit road. Now we see the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming to you Kelly. And he made some big gains on that last run. This is his second pit stop. They gave him a wedge adjustment the first time around and he said that was a good change from the middle but I could use a little more work and you see them giving him that adjustment right there and it's going to be four Goodyear tires for Dale Jr. Meanwhile his teammate Casey Kane in the five said the car is tougher to turn when I move the track wire in here. They gave him a wedge adjustment as well. Jeff Gordon making his way down pit road as well. He's been saying he's a little bit too tight in the middle of three and four and then a little bit loose off. Also, he did not like two tires on the last stop. So they will definitely go four here. Sonoka race fuel and the tape will put a little tape on the grill as well, trying to give him a little bit better uh, turn, a little bit freer in the turns three and four, Dave. Oh, a little stumble on the front. Tony Stewart is in. He took right side tires his first time down pit road. The car's been tight this afternoon. Hasn't really operated the way he would like it to. So four tires and fuel for Stewart. The right side of that car looked a little beat up too, Jeff. It looked like there had been a little contact to the right side of Tony Stewart's car. As A.J. Allmendinger has been afforded the lead. We've seen a lot of pit strategy taking place. Allmendinger. Landon Castle, Justin Allgaier, Kyle Busch moving up to third. A close call here for the 24 team trying to get that tape off the front.
Caution has come out from New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the second time. Debris on the racetrack and the flames rolling out from the right side of the seven of Alex Bowman. You know, we've seen this before at the short tracks. The seven had an issue with the right front tire. It looked like he melted the bead, came down Pet Road, got a new tire on it, but didn't clear all the old rubber, I'm assuming. Off. Well, no, I disagree. It's not out. Yeah, we're going to disagree. It is not out, and the driver's climbing out of the car. That's Alex Bowman jumping out of there. I think he was telling him to get out. At least that's what he needed to be telling. Yeah. And, and what there's, happens is there's a fire suppression system under there that will try to help put that out. It, it tries to help, but that fire is what was left of the flat tire on the right front brake rotor. These brake rotors are ridiculously warm. And what happens is, is after you remove the old tire and put the new one on, if there's still some strings or some cords on there, that's really just like a wick to a candle. And once it hits that hot rotor, it, 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 you see what happens. Big, big flames. So there's some debris on the track. That's why the caution came out. We saw the seven of Alex Bowman make his way onto pit road with the right front tire down and all of that heat that had built up. The tire was actually on fire when they took it off. They put the new tire on and apparently there was still some flames underneath that car before he left his pit stall. Yeah, we talked earlier about all these different strategies and when to come on the green. Well, race leader A.J. Allmendinger pitted at lap 23. He didn't follow everyone else to pit road. He stayed his course. And, you know, that's a tough tough decision to stay on the racetrack and you know Brian Burns made that decision and it's gained him a tremendous amount of track position because now he's the leader he still has to come to pit road but he's going to be able to pit change tires and come out probably the second half of the field good decision though maybe we would have lost a lap if he would have pitted gaining track position through strategy we'll see if it pays off for AJ Allmendinger flames coming out from underneath the seven of Alex Bowman they continue. Now, Kenza. We are on lap 101 of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing from New Hampshire, presented by Pixels. 
Get your news, results, and highlights delivered to your inbox. Subscribe to the free official NASCAR newsletter at nascar.com slash newsletter. And the cleanup continues for the 17th as they are working to get that speedy dry off the track. Now, they had to put the fire out underneath the right front of the seven of Alex Bowman. He came onto pit road with a flat tire. A lot of heat builds up in there, Steve. And we're hearing that there's a little bit of communication going on between the nine team of Sam Hornish Jr. Marty. And I believe we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with a couple mics here. So there is the smoldering tire that came off of the seven of Alex Bowman. And Alex Bowman, his uh, car being pulled back into the garage. While they clean up on pit road, we're going to take a quick break. Again, 102 laps complete from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. NASCAR racing continues next week from Indianapolis on NBCSN and NBC. Sunday on NBCSN, it's Sprint Cup Series racing from the Brickyard, presented by Golden Corral. That coverage starting at 2 p.m. Eastern. Saturday on NBC, Xfinity Series Lily Diabetes 250. That coverage beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. Field going back two by two, but the light's still on the pace car, meaning that we're not getting back to racing yet. They're still working on cleaning up from the right front tire of Alex Bowman. So while that cleanup continues, we'll take another quick break and be right back to New Hampshire.
Welcome back, two by two. The 11. They go through turns three and four. Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch making up row number one. Alex Bowman was checked and released from the infield care center. As they come out of turn number four, green flag back in the air. Brothers side by side racing for second. Kurt Busch trying to get the advantage on the outside. Kyle Busch on the inside. Brad Kislowski out front. Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Carl Edwards, the top five. Welcome back, guys. Hey, if you don't want us to talk. <laughs> You can just tell us, you know. <laughs> no, no, I apologize. We did have some audio issues. We're glad that those are cleared up now. A little bit more strategy playing into this race now. We saw some of the people that were a little bit further back in the field decide to come to pit road. Guys like Joey Logano, he came onto pit road. He's being scored ninth right now, but came onto pit road on lap 104. Yeah, that's basically where the break is. We have Joey Logano, A.J. Allmendinger. Great job by the crew chief keeping him on the racetrack. He caught the last caution, saved him from losing a lap. Jeff Gordon, Martin Truex, Jamie McMurray. All of those cars in the second half of the field here have come to pit road a lap 104, reset their tires and fuel. They kind of have reset their race. In the front, though, we have uh, I mean, a great battle. We have Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Dale Jr. Those four cars all seem to be very happy with their setups, very happy with their balance. They stayed on the racetrack. Kyle Busch moving over for the 88. Dale Earnhardt Jr. going by. So Kyle Busch falls to the fourth spot, Kelly. Now Rick, just before that caution came out, Kyle Busch started reporting a vibration on the 18 car. They considered him bringing, bringing him into pit because they thought maybe it was a loose wheel on the left rear. But Kyle said it's only happening under braking. It's only under braking. In fact, while he ran those caution laps, they said, can you make it do it while you're swerving here under caution? What's your diagnosis with this, Steve? Well, if it's only on the braking, you know, that's one thing. The brake systems on these cars are very temperamental to heat. We talk about them running too hot. You hear that all the time about brake fade and then going away and not stopping very good. But you can also run these braking systems too cold. And if you run too much air to the brake systems and don't get them hot enough, then they kind of get blotchy. And, and as you step on the brake pedal, they, they shake. And it can be very frustrating because anything in a race car that causes a vibration is reducing grip. If the car's shaking, the tires aren't working as good as they can be, and it can be very frustrating in the seat, can't it, Jeff? The, fir the first time that I had a brake shake like that, the pedal was shaking on my foot, and we came in and they said, we're going to we're going to tape them off. We're going to make the brakes hotter. I thought, you and the guys are nuts. <laughs> I mean, this is not what we want to do. And sure enough, getting, them, getting heat in them fixed really? them. And remember, we have long straightaways here, as you see these two cars battles battle. But the long straightaways give an opportunity for the brakes to cool off. So you have to be careful, as Steve said, to not cool them off too much because they will start shaking and they won't work as well either. Joey Logano just worked by the 21 of Ryan Blaney. Now Jeff Gordon on the back bumper of Blaney. And Ryan Blaney running ninth right now. Glenn Wood just celebrated his 90th birthday. That's Hall of Famer Glenn Wood. Yeah, and they've struggled. You know, the last two races they've missed due to weather. They had good race cars, but they just missed it due to weather. They come here, qualify well, and also they're running well. They're running ninth place in front of Jeff Gordon. That's a really good run for a limited scheduled race team. Yeah, another good run is, and we talked about this guy who qualified really good, but Landon Castle in that 40 car is running back in the 15th position. That is such a strong run for a smaller team. He's done a great job. You see him here. He's he's pressuring the 11, getting into turn one. You know, these are not teams that you expect to come out and run with Joe Gibbs Racing and Richard Childress Racing and so on. But Land is doing a great job. He grew up on the short tracks, and it's showing he's doing a great job on the short track today. And I, I guarantee that Denny Hammond's like, who is that? Who is that? You know, because you don't race against this right. car. You don't know the, the look of the car. So, you know, when you are a team like Denny Hamlin and the funding that you have in a car like the 40 car that doesn't have the funding can put the pressure on you, you start wondering, what are we doing wrong, you know? And that's no disrespect to the 40 and what they're doing because they're doing a wonderful job. 
but there's just so many more resources that Joe Gibbs Racing has compared to the 40. And we've mentioned lower budget teams when we talk about, say, a Landon Castle, as the caution has come out once again. Debris on the front stretch. But when I mention lower budget teams, we're still talking millions of dollars are being spent on those lower budget teams. It's a it's an expensive sport. No question. It's just you're comparing it against teams that have four teams, right? And they're spending upwards of a hundred million dollars for all four teams. So it's just a huge variance. Yeah, lower is a relative term. <laughs> yeah. Now this so, gets interesting. This caution comes right. out and to me at a really interesting time. And this is when I was always glad I was a driver. Because I just get to do what my crew chief tells me to do. Because to me, this is a difficult decision. I love when the drivers say that. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Simple, I was just being nice. When it's a simple call, they always say, well, yeah, we're coming. And when it's a difficult call, I'm like, oh, hey, wait, that's your decision. I, I got no opinion. Tell do me it, if hey, I need to come just, to pit road. Just do it right, okay? Just do it right. So what are you doing? Well, Jeff. the leaders have about 20 laps on their tires. This is the same break point we had earlier in the race. Brad Keselowski at that point in the race decided to come. But the difficult position here is he knows there's a bunch of cars that pitted a lap 104, about 15 of them. They're not coming. So I think that they're going to have to come for fuel. I think someone in these top 10 are going to come. But I can assure you the cars that just pitted, they're staying. Kyle Busch looked as though he was going to come, and then he decided to move back on the track. So Carl Edwards is the first one that came to pit road. He was sixth last lap by, Dave. And looking now, guys, down the 48, there he is, Jimmy Johnson coming onto pit road. Big, big adjustment last time. They want to make even more adjustments this time. The car just has not been under him all day long. Marty? The original plan for Carl Edwards was two tires. Now they're going to go four tires. Darian Grubb making that call as Carl was coming down pit road. He said, I'm going to need tires because I know those guys behind me are going to be coming. So they come for four tires here. Carl was a little bit too tight for Carl. Clint Boyer's car, not good either. Taking a long time to work on it now. They knew they were going to go up a half around on the right rear wedge, but big problems for the 15. We'll check on it. And it looks as though he got into the wall to see the making the repairs on the right side. We, yeah, it looks like they're just trying to get some clearance for the right rear tire, help the aerodynamics a little bit. It's a short track. You're not as worried about the aerodynamics as you are, just making sure you don't rub through a tire. But we talked about the decision to pit, and we're going to have this decision time and time again all day long. The leaders force the hand, they stay out. Carl Edwards decides to come to pit road, and because of that, he's going to start way back, probably outside the top 20. That, those are the decisions that are going to happen today, and they can be very, very frustrating if you continue to lose track position. Because of this caution, the 14 of Tony Stewart will score a lap down. He will get the free pass. Welcome back, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Racing from New Hampshire Motor Speedway, presented by Pixels. Brad Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, they will restart one and two. They stayed on the track. Joey Logano is the highest scored car that came to pit road on lap 104. And then Trevor, yeah, Trevor Bain is 20th, and he was the highest scored car that came onto pit road most recently. 
out of turn number four, and we're back to racing in New Hampshire. Carl Edwards, who was sixth, has dropped back to the 22nd position after coming to pit road, so giving up a lot of track position to come to pit road out of the top 10. And once again, Brad Keselowski, who was on the outside, got a great start. Kyle Busch was able to pass his brother, Kurt, to get up to the second position. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Casey Kane, your top five. You see Joey Logano here underneath the 78 of Martin Truex. He has a little bit fresher tires than the guys in front of him. He's working that lower lane. You see, he has to squeeze up in front of the 78. He knows, Joey knows he needs that wider run off the corner. To try to exit on the bottom on that flat first lane is very difficult. And how about just in front of Joey, you see Ryan Blaney. What a good run for those guys once again. I know we said it earlier, but, you know, he stood in there tall to go on a restart. These restarts we've talked about are very difficult. He's racing against some of the best drivers in the world. He stood his own. Good good race and a really good restart. Yeah, Ryan Blaney, just 21 years old out of High Point, North Carolina. He started this race 16th, already up into the seventh position. Yeah, when we talk about track position, why is it important to keep it? Single file up front, back here farther, two, three, and four wide, lap after lap. The, when you lose your track position, we, you know, documented the 19 came to Pitt Road, got tires, and you see him right here behind the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to use those tires. But when the track's congested, there's only so many places to go. Strategy playing into the positioning of the guy who was running up in the sixth position, that's Carl Edwards in the 19. Now, all the way back outside of the top 20. Carl Edwards has actually worked his way back up to 18th. This is what they had to say on the radio about strategy. Darian, yeah, once you get all lined up, just let me know exactly what you want to do. You want me to just abuse the heck out of him and go as far forward as I can, or, or if you got any sort of plan, you need me to do anything with the tires? Or I wouldn't abuse it, but I would go forward as you can here. Let's put this in our window for one more stop at the end. Okay. All right. And Darian Grubb has done that math, Rick. It, it mass out to about 198 or so. If we play to the cycle, they'd have to push it, but they might put themselves in a position here to go on one more stop. Steve, that's a stretch. You need cautions, but worth the gamble. What do you think? Well, they're a victory lane at the Coca-Cola 600 because of a gamble like that. So I'm not going to question Darian Grubb. This is a fuel mileage race, and they're going to play the game the soonest. Now, I, it's an aggressive gamble. The caution's going to have to fall extremely right. They can't have an ill-timed caution. But hey, listen, the, usually I've found the first team to start worrying about fuel mileage is going to have the advantage when it comes to a fuel mileage run at the end of the race. And they're really stretching it, too. I mean, you're going to have to have caution laps for them to be able to make it. We mentioned the fuel window between 78 and 83 laps. You double 83, you're at 166, and we still have 174 laps to go. Yeah, but stats say a lot about this racetrack. 70% of the cautions come in the last 150 laps of this race. That, that is a huge stat, and it's not one or two races. We've seen it for the last 10 or 15 races here. You have a little green flag run right here in the 100s, but when you get around lap 200, it's going to be caution after caution after caution. That's a lot of opportunity to save fuel. Joey Logano was able to find victory lane a year ago at this racetrack. Now he's able to get by Ryan Blaney. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. in the 78, also trying to get by the 21. You saw the 21 with a big wiggle right there. He tried to go the throttle in the back of the car, didn't hook up. 78 turn left and took advantage of it. That's just low grip on corner exit. That's uh, that's what's very difficult about this racetrack is if you want the car to turn in the middle of the corner the way it needs to, you have to give up something. And what you end up giving up is rear grip. Now you can see he's letting the 24 go around. We Must talked earlier. He's got a problem. He obviously feels like he has a problem. He's coming on pit road. So Ryan Blaney making his way onto pit road after running in the top 10. A very impressive run early in this race. What a tough break for this team. Marty. And guys, Ryan Blaney is coming down. He thinks he might have a loose wheel. That is what the problem is. They had such a good run, as you guys were mentioning, in the top ten and very solidly. In fact, he said the last changes helped the car tremendously. Now they'll have to hope this stays green for as long as they can. Taking a long time on the left side there. You saw the wedge adjustment as well. Ryan Blaney heading back on the racetrack, hoping he can sequence back and get back on the lead lap here, fellas. That's a terrible spot for a driver to be in. It's so hard to know if you should pit or not. 
There's so many times you complain about a vibration. It's terrible. You come in, you pit, they take the tire off, and they say, there's nothing wrong. And then you feel horrible. But then if you don't pit and something breaks, then you, you, you know, you're right. guilty of doing something wrong. So it's a terrible position for a driver to be in. We see the 18 right here slowly working to run down the two. He's running some very good laps. Earlier we heard about the 18 having a brake vibration. And we talked about how sensitive these brakes are to temperature. You can run them too cool. You can run them too warm. Well, if we ride on board with the 43 of Eric Almirola, you know, we have a shot of his right front corner suspension. You'll see as he goes down into the corner how much these brakes glow. So if you look inside the right front tire, he gets on the brakes. You see that bright red glow. You only see half of it because they have a shield protecting the shock from the heat. But you can see the front half of the rotor, just how much that glows. That's solid steel glowing bright red. That's a ton of heat. Adding insult to injury to the 21 team and Ryan Blaney, after thinking they had a loose wheel, he came to pit road. Well, he was too fast entering pit road. So he has already served his penalty and been down pit road and back onto the track. Kevin Harvick closing in on the 41 his teammate Kurt Busch. Kevin Harvick has been running that higher line as Jeff you had mentioned earlier making the high line working here at New Hampshire and I think that's going to work as the run goes on the tires get older and older and older that's where that high line is going to really be advantageous it may work right now but I think it work better as the tires get older and how do Fresh tires work. Well, Carl Edwards has made his way all the way up to 12. Brad Keselowski still leading. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Pixels in theaters Friday and by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side and by AARP. Real possibilities. I want to take a look at our Toyota Camry on track car a little more detail maybe go inside this car. Yeah, well, Steve was talking about the brake heat, and we saw how hot the brakes get. We've also heard drivers talking about their cars not driving the way they want them to drive. Well, one of the things the drivers can do, if you see this brake bias adjuster that says AP Racing on it, that is a way to adjust the brakes. 
There's an R with an arrow. So if you turn that to the left, counterclockwise, you're going to put rear brake into the car. That's going to make the car freer on corner entry. It's going to take heat off the front brakes. If you're tight, that can work. If you're loose, you want to put front brake into the car and take rear brake away from it. So that's a way the drivers can help make their car drive better. Yeah, and as a crew chief, I want to know what my driver's doing because while the driver's loose into the corner, he keeps cranking brake to the front and thinks that's helping my car. It's driving a little bit better. I would have concern about the longevity of that. If you ask the front tires to do all the braking, you could run out of brakes. So it's important to use it as an adjustment, but the op be open about it, communicate, and understand what the negatives could possibly be if you get too far one way or the other. We're closing in on the halfway point of this race. We want to go through the field. We'll start with Marty Snyder. We'll begin through the field with Brad Keselowski, who's out front. Speaking of dialing in brake, that's exactly what he did, fellas. Very good timing. Keselowski, a little while ago, dialed three quarters of a round of front brake in. Car was too loose for Keselowski. Now he's a little bit too tight in the center of the drive off. Still good. Kelly? Kyle Busch has led 47 laps at this race, but now he finds himself staring at the back of the two car. He said, I can keep up and maybe even gain on him him a little bit, but it's going to be really tough to pass. He said, I definitely need more entry gift and more center turn, Marty. Kelly, Kevin Harvick back there in the third position. He's been dealing with the car that's a little bit tight. You know, I asked him how much experimenting is going on here for a guy like you that's in the chase. Harvick told me a lot on Friday. He said we were way off Friday, but Saturday we talked about it for about an hour, changed everything. We've been good since then, Mike. Marty, Kurt Busch said his car is real good for the first five or six laps of a run, but then it gets loose. He needs more drive off. He said he needs more constant load to keep the front end down. They're going to work on giving him more stability in the right rear on the next stop. Kelly? Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 19th, has worked his way all the way up to fifth, but he's saying he needs some help in three and four. He also said he hadn't had a chance to move the track bar all day, just moved it up an inch, and now he'll let the team know what that does to the 88. Behind him is his teammate, Important to note, Joe Logano stopped topped on lap 104, restarted 10th then. He's always made his way up to 7th. The car free in, free off, tight in the center for Joey Logano. Not making the progress that they thought they would make when they pitted for those four tires. Martin Twex Jr. right behind him. He's in the 8th position. I talked to his team owner, Barney Visser, earlier today, and there's been talk of this team switching manufacturers. I asked Barney if that might happen. He said, it's a very real possibility. He said, in fact, I would love to move manufacturers if we can get the deal done in the next month or two. Mike? Marty, talking to Jeff Gordon's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, this morning, he said they have to be real creative as how they get to the front. He knew it would be very difficult. They rolled off 23rd on the grid. So far, they've taken two, two tires twice this afternoon. The handling of the race car, a little tight middle, a little loose off. Uh, they took right sides last time as well. Meanwhile, A.J. Allmendinger, his best finish in his last seven races. He's been, well, 21st or worse. So this has been a pretty good run for him this afternoon. He's hoping it continues. So far, a little bit loose, but otherwise pretty happy with his race car, Marty. Carl Edwards restarted 21st for those four fresh tires. Mike, he has made his way up into the 11th position right now. He just told Darian Grubb moments ago on the radio, I think the tires really helped the initial part of the run, and now it's evened out for everybody. Initially in this run, he said, I have a very big vibration all of a sudden. Haven't had it all day, but he hasn't said a word about that vibration since, Mike. At the beginning of practice on Saturday, Jamie McMurray's team had one setup. They felt pretty comfortable with it, so they decided to experiment a little bit with a second setup. They got away, and they fell off significantly on speed, so obviously they went in the back in the direction of the first setup, but they haven't been able to recover the speed they had initially on Saturday. They've been struggling a little bit and have been tight all afternoon, Dave. Paul Menard's car was tight earlier, but they've gotten it much better, according to the driver. They stayed out under this last caution. They pitted last on lap 104 for four tires. Mike? Ryan Newman's car has been tight throughout the course of the afternoon. They've adjusted on it significantly with track bar. Well, he's been adjusting the track bar. They also gave him a wedge adjustment, an air pressure adjustment on the last stop. But still, there's a bit of a chatter in the right rear, and they've been struggling to try to get the right feel for Newman, Dave. Speaking of chatter, Matt Kenseth described his car as chattery off the corner and pretty loose in. That's why on the last pit stop, they made a major air pressure adjustment and changed four Goodyear tires for him. Hasn't reported yet whether that's done anything for the 20 car. Rick. 
pretty good run so far for Landon Castle. Let me tell you up there, he says the car's pretty good. The balance is okay. Starts off loose, then gets a little bit tight middle, but a, a pretty good run for this 40 team so far. Denny Hamlin, on the other hand, won the Xfinity race yesterday. Came in as perhaps one of the favorites this afternoon, but his car just has not been where he would like it. It's been tight, it's gone to loose, and then it's gone back to tight. Right now, that's exactly where it is, especially in the middle of the corner. Dave? Jimmy Johnson still not happy with his car. A little free in, still tight in the center. He was asked, did those big adjustments we made on the last stop do anything for you? Small steps. Small steps is what he said, Mike. Small steps is what the 17 team is hoping to take as well. It's best finish here for, uh, for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Has been ninth at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So far, the car, though, a little bit loose in. Tight center. They made a four-tire change and also took a round out of the left rear. The car has been a little bit better since, but not significantly, Dave. Clint Boyer just reported that his car is getting really loose. We saw him stop for quite a while on that last pit stop. That was actually fixing damage that occurred earlier in the race. So a fairly normal pit stop otherwise for him. But now if they could fix that loose race car, this driver would be a little happier. Rick, back to you. Yeah, great job going through the field. That brought to you by Nationwide. Got to the top 20. And Brad Keselowski. Out in front of Kyle Busch, 2.8 seconds is the gap between one and two. Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the top five. I would say I'm surprised to see the 48 running as far back in the field as he is right now in the 18th position. He is. He's, he's definitely not. Jimmy Johnson doesn't seem to be good with his race car. But, you know, this race, we talk about it time and time again. It doesn't matter where you run at the beginning. What strategy will you be at the end? Slick and hot. Clear. All clear. Flames rolling out from the right side. And welcome back to the Magic Mile. 
we have 159 laps complete of 301. Let's take a look at the lap leaders today brought to you by RVs. Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch. Brad was 78 laps led, Kyle Busch 47. They led all but 42 laps last week, and all but 34 so far today. Brad Keselowski in front of Kevin Harvick, who's running in the second position, and he is three seconds behind Brad Keselowski. But Kevin Harvick has caught the attention of a few different drivers on the track. Here's what the 24 and 2 had to say about the four. You are down here, but he's apex center on the third team and driving up off. I think he's finding grip and getting a real good run off right here. It dawned on me. Harvick is running a modified, the modified line exiting from the center and off, if that makes sense. Yeah, it made sense last three times, Joe. I got it. Info, but I got it. That's a perfect example of how spotters on the roof. Both of those were the spotters. That was Eddie DeHunt, the spotter for the 24, and Joey Meyer, the spotter for the two, about how they're on the roof. They're doing more than just clearing their drivers through traffic. They're watching the race. They're observing the race. Brad Keselowski and Jeff Gordon, they only know what's out their windshield. They can't see the whole racetrack. Those guys, those eyes in the sky, they watch the whole racetrack. If someone's moving around and finding grip, very important to tell your drivers because a guy like Brad, he's very good at searching around, but he may never think to run that crazy wide exit that the four of Kevin Harvick is running. You know, his tracks continue to get slick. People on old tires are getting ready to start to pit. We talked about Harvick. We saw him a little bit ago. Watch him leave the corner right here, how free he gets. I mean, he's sideways. He's running second. You know, he has a good handling car, but it still shows you as he tried to pass Gillen in a 38 how hard it is to get the rear tires on the racetrack and not spin them. That's a lot lower line than we've seen him run, too, as he was trying to get below the 38 of Gillen. And that's a great point. He had to do something different. He had to do something that he wasn't in the rhythm of doing, but he had to tr try to pass Gillen, so the only way to do it was to drop low, and sometimes it surprises you because you hadn't been there. Still averaging over 124 miles an hour. This is what we've seen with Kevin Harvick as he has matured to become a better race car driver and obviously one of the best race car drivers in this series. He has been willing to look around and change his lines. Early in his career, he was what we call a bottom feeder. The only place he ran was on the bottom of the racetrack. If he tried to move somewhere else, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't make lap time. He got committed to becoming a better driver. He got committed to finding a way to run in different lines and now, He's maybe the best driver in the high line, where before he was maybe the worst driver in the high line. So it's a, it's just, it just shows you how no matter how good you are, you can always improve. And he took it upon himself to get better in that area. You talk about another guy that loves to run the bottom of the racetrack. He it reminds me of Tony Stewart at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. He loves to run the bottom. You see here just in front of our leader, Brad Keselowski in the two, Tony rolls in, rolls right about him on the racetrack, a nice straight exit. Very patient, very conserved. He's making it very difficult on our leader, Brad Keselowski, to get around him. Tony's not one to make many mistakes. You see right here, rolls right around, just low enough on the racetrack to make it hard for the two. The two goes down, catches the flat, can't get off the corner as well. Now it looks like he has a bumper underneath the quarter panel of the 14. And this is for Brad Keselowski to put Tony Stewart a lap down. Martin Truex Jr. closing the gap on the five of Casey Kane. Casey Kane, the only driver in the top seven that hasn't won in 2015. Casey Kane running sixth right now. And, and Rick, our field is really split into three different groups right now. We have a whole group of cars that pitted in the mid 80s, another group of, part of cars that pitted around lap 105, and another group of cars that pitted a lap 118. Those cars that pitted in the mid 80s, Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, even Casey Kane, you see all these cars. They have to start thinking about pit road. Their fuel window is coming up in the next four or five laps. It's going to be very interesting to see when they hit pit road what those other groups of cars do. Remember about 60 laps ago, Ryan Blaney came to pit road because he thought he had a vibration or a wheel loose. Well, now listen to the radio on the 18. They may have the same issue. So a front brake vibrating issue. Well, and that's exactly what we talked about. He turned his brake, his front brakes on to try to get the heat out of the tires, not to let the air pressure build up in the tires because that all that heat that uh, Steve showed us earlier in the rotor, that goes straight through the wheel into the tire and gets the air pressure way up and it makes it where the car won't turn. 
So when they pulled the tape off, or, or rather when he turned the fan on to run air to the rotors, he started getting a brake chatter. That means he's actually got them too cool. This, this, is a, this is a modern problem. We didn't have this problem years ago. This is an issue with modern brakes that want to run hot. We saw the 42 get a little sideways in front of Kyle Busch. Now Kurt Busch is on pit road. Mike? And he's been looking for rear stability, Rick, throughout the course of this run. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. You can see the wrench now going in on the right side. Now they move to the left side. Again, the wrench going in. So wedge adjustments on both sides of the race car. Four, four good years and a load of Sunoco race fuel trying to tighten him up. Kurt Busch starting the green flag pit stops we were expecting around this time. And it, hey, monkey see, monkey do. You cannot get beat to pit road. The 41's on pit road. That forces the 78. Cole Pern, he calls Martin Truex on pit road next. So Martin Truex Jr. moving to his pit stall, which is down toward the turn one side of pit road. And we'll go down to Marty. For Martin Truex Jr., he's going to pit. He's one of those guys that pitted at lap 104. But once again, they come earlier than everybody else. He said the car was a little bit freer that run for Martin Truex Jr. because they did run a full fuel run here. Cole Pern goes with four tires. So again, Cole Pern making the call to pit a little bit earlier than most everybody else that those tires might help on this run. You know, that was a, an interesting pit stop there. The NASCAR official was out there on the outside of that car. They have switched to where they don't send NASCAR officials out on the outside of these cars anymore as well. I mean, they don't send them around every car. Yeah, and I think that's the opportunity for NASCAR under green flag pit stops. There's only one car on pit road at a time or, or very few cars on pit road. The official can go over, maybe monitoring. We've heard a lot of talk this whole year about less lug nuts, two, three, four lug nuts instead of five. Perhaps while there isn't a rule, maybe they just want to monitor the situation, take the take the uh, official out there, have him watch the tire changes. That's a great time to do it when pit road is somewhat empty. With Martin Truex, he came on pit road, and he came on pit road early. He didn't have to hit pit road that early because of fuel, but they did it because they want to go out. They're expecting this to stay green. They want to put new tires on as quick as they can so they can get make lap time. They can, they can gain on the field. They're not going to probably go from where they were to leading the race, but if they can jump past three or four cars in this cycle by pitting earlier, that allows them a better chance to get a better finish. So pitting early is a little bit of a gamble because your caution may come out, but if it doesn't, it can gain you a lot of spots. And how do you make that gamble? You win a race. And when you <laughs> win a race, right. you're in the chase. That makes this decision a whole lot better. When we talk about being aggressive, it's not just with crazy setups. It's small decisions like that that Cole Pern's making that perhaps could put them in position. And here comes Kevin Harvick, the four on the pit road now. I was going to mention Carl Edwards has moved up into the ninth spot after coming to pit road, and we go down to Kelly. Kelly yeah, Lerner Jr. working his way up to the fourth position. Remember, he said he had made a track bar adjustment inside the cockpit. Well, his crew chief, Greg guy saying that track bar hurt your exit more than it helped. So they're going to help give him an adjustment here on pit road and give him new Goodyear tires, Marty. Kelly, Kevin Harvick very happy with his race car. A little bit tight in the center of the corner. Quarter round to wedge. That's it. Half pound in the right rear tire. Trying to get that car to loosen up just a little bit for Harvick, who's been very happy with his Ford machine all afternoon. And they packed it full of Sunoco fuel. Kelly. Here comes Kyle Busch. He has said that he was a little bit loose, but then when he tried to run up high, he just said, I just can't turn at all of their men. You're they're going to give him four new Goodyear tires with Sunoco fuel, Mike. Jeff Gordon has been loose throughout the course of this run. They'll go to work on the left sides here, and they'll also make a wedge adjustment on the 24 car, going to try to tighten him up. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin's been struggling with the handling and the balance of his race car as well. It's tight center right now. They'll make a wedge adjustment and a four-tire change on the 11. I noticed the 24 as we see the one coming back in, but the 24 of Jeff Gordon may have got a little too close to the wall and had a longer pit stop than they wanted, Mike. Jimmy McMurray on pit road now as well. His car needs to be tighter. Tighter. They're going to try to tighten him up with an air pressure adjustment here. A four-tire change, the call by Matt McCall. He's away after taking as much fuel as possible, Marty. As we mentioned, Mike, 
Brad Keselowski pits from the lead. We mentioned that he had been a little bit loose in. That's why he dialed in that front break. But he mainly was tight in the center at the end of that run. They're going to make a very small wedge adjustment here for Brad Keselowski and also an air pressure adjustment. Little problem getting that left rear tire in there. Four tires, and he's away, Dave. Jimmy Johnson said, I just don't have a front end to turn the center, and I don't know why. Another big chassis adjustment, air pressure adjustment for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. The 15 of Clint Boyer is also on pit road. He said he was getting really loose, and he said at the very end, I feel like I'm burning that right rear tire off. They changed all four. A lot of action taking place still on pit road as we're seeing the 15 come off of pit road. It looked as though the 24 though when he came in after they changed the right side tires the jack man's not able to jack the car up because he's a little bit too close to pit road. Well pit you wall. see right here he jumps over the front tire changer angles the jack the best he can to get away from pit wall. But then you see two pumps on the jack you really want to try to do that in one pump. But when you get too close to pit wall it makes the job harder. Those are the small things that cost yourself time. You race for tenths of a second on the racetrack. You don't want to give up seconds on pit road and another issue for Hendrick Motorsports the 48 of Jimmy Johnson too fast off pit road so he'll have to come back on pit road. There's the pit road comparison between Denny Hamlin and Jeff Gordon. See the pit time difference and really that's a mistake that Jeff Gordon didn't need to make. I can understand getting in getting in the pit wrong if there's a car in front of you or a car behind you where you know you're going to have to maneuver around them but there was nobody around him so he came in too hot and just made a mistake and you can see it costs almost three seconds. Three seconds is a long way to grow, to yep. gain on the racetrack. And they're continuing to cycle through pit stops. We go back to Mike Massaro. And A.J. Allmendinger on his way down pit road as well. His car has been a little bit too loose. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. Four tires and fuel for Allmendinger. You see the 48 coming off of pit road. That is the second time this year that they have had a speeding penalty on pit road. The two. Getting to the inside of the four of Kevin Harvick. Kozlowski taking away the ninth position and pretty close there for the four. A little potentially contact. We've seen cars move by just getting the air off of the spoiler. Yeah, and how did Brad Kozlowski get behind Kevin Harvick? Well, Kevin Harvick pitted three laps before Brad Kozlowski, so that means he had new tires for three extra laps. At about a half a second a lap, that leapfrog the two through the pit cycle. But you see right here, Brad Keselowski is making those new tires work for him. He has such a great race car. He's settling back in, gets in front of the four. Now it's just time to go to work. He needs to drive his race car and let the cars in front of him pit. Eventually, he should cycle back to being the leader. Same thing with Kyle Busch behind him. You know, he pitted, he pitted later than those guys too, and he is he's behind Harvick because of that. And then I think Harvick's car, I think he's going to stand his best chance later in a run. We've seen him move his line up. That really has helped this car early in the run. He hasn't had the speed that these guys have, but if he can stay with them for a little bit, he may can learn what he, how he needs to be better in the short run. But if he can stay with them, I think he might can beat them on a long run. We were mentioning strategy and Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards is all the way back up to second now. Joey Logano up in front of the field. He came onto pit road at lap 104. He'll have to come to pit road here in just a moment to give up to the lead. Carl Edwards, though. Came on to pit road at lap 118, so he can stay out just a bit longer. Right now, Joey Logano leading at New Hampshire. Lead changes today from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Six have taken place. It's presented by Sprint. Join all in wireless from Sprint. Unlimited talk, text, 
and high speed data and pick your smartphone for just $80 a month. One of those that have been out front, Joey Logano, expecting him on pit road any moment now. And the caution comes out. Huge break for who, Steve? Well, I think this is the big break for the guys that stayed on the racetrack. Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth. They look really good in this situation. The most important thing, though, is that Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick, the ones that have pitted, they're so fast that they've stayed on the lead lap. So now they can stay out and they'll end up the leader. But once again, we're going to be flip-flopped on tire strategy. They're going to be have the lead but have a little bit older tires. Debris in turn number two brings this caution out. It's the fourth one of the day. Field all behind the pace car. Driven by Brett Bodine, former Sprint Cup driver. The 48 is going to... 38, I believe, is going to get the free pass. And the debris is in turn three, is what we're hearing from NASCAR. Just 113 laps remaining from New Hampshire. There's the water bottle. The culprit. I believe that every water bottle ought to be numbered. I ought to have the car number <laughs> on it. Just like lead and, and everything else. That that on the, the, the weights. There ought to be a penalty. So how many have to come, Steve? We have Joey Logano will have to come onto pit road. Carl Edwards would take this opportunity, as will Matt Kenseth. Paul Menard, they're the top four. Yeah, we were mentioned earlier about Darren Grubb and Carl Edwards trying to play the fuel strategy game. Well, this is a little bit of a hiccup in that game because there's no way they're running 112 laps, but they really have to come to pit road. So that took the gamble they made earlier is kind of out the window. This almost resets the field a little bit. Everyone here will not be able to make it on fuel. Everyone who stops here still has to stop again. But this is New Hampshire. This is what always happens from lap 189. It's not just when you're going to pit, but if you put fuel on here, do you put left sides on here? You're thinking about what am I going to do on my next pit stop? You always have to be planning ahead. So I expect to see a very busy pit road right here. And Joey Logano, who has the lead, will give it up as he comes to pit road. Matt Kenseth behind him as well. Carl Edwards, Paul Menard, Dave. Matt will get four Goodyear tires and a wedge adjustment for a car that was too tight at the end of the run. He'll also get Sunoco fuel. The 27 of Paul Menard, he also made a fuel run that time. Four tires for him. His car was just a little bit pushy in the front end there, Marty. Jimmy Logano, bottom left to your screen, said, I just have to have more drive off. Those guys are killing me from the middle of the corner off. His car too loose. He was way down on his track bar. They make a wedge adjustment. There you see it going in. Four tires. Carl Edwards in front of him. He said he was free on the entry, a little bit tight in the center of the corner. Also a wedge adjustment for Edwards. Logano wins that race off pit road with those four fresh Goodyear tires. And it looked like seven stayed on the racetrack. So Logano wins the race off pit road with four tires.
Welcome back to the Magic Mile. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, one and two. Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Martin Truex Jr. is the top five. As they come out of turn number four, Brad Keselowski restarts on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Kevin Harvick running a lot lower line than he's used to, but he's going to take the lead away from Brad Keselowski. Here comes Kyle Busch looking at the inside of the two as well. Brad Keselowski not able to get up to speed as quickly, and he'll fall all the way back to third. It's amazing how this racetrack, you can have a great race car, Leading the race, they drop the green on a restart. Now you have no grip, and the guys around you have more. That's a common occurrence here. It's no fun when it's you, but it, that is something we see every single race here. You mentioned it's no fun when it's you. That comment that you made, you should put the numbers on water bottles. Ray Evernham actually tweeted after you said that we used to put Jeff Burton's number on our water bottles. So they were trying to get you in trouble. With friends like that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Kevin Harvick in front of the field, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., A.J. Allmendinger has fought his way into the top five as we ride along with Dale Jr. And now Martin Trex Jr., Joey Logano has gotten by the 47. Here comes the 20 of Matt Kenseth. A good rebound after the speeding penalty on pit road. I really like the position of the 22 and the 20 as well, Rick. They were on pit road. They got four tires. It's well, it's Paul Menard pretty high up out of the groove. You know what those four tires does? It's not just about fuel. Wow, well, the 20 got a tire rub now. Smoke. There was some contact made and a lot of tire rub out of the 27. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Guys. He's trying to get to pit road. It's very congested right now. It'll be a hard left turn. Will there be an opening? He's not going to be able to make it. That's a huge mistake and a huge penalty not to make the cone. You know, you got to turn inside of that pit cone. If you go on the outside of it, there's a huge penalty for pit. He was not able to make that. It's very difficult, though. The spotter was trying to tell him Paul just needed to stop a little bit sooner, let all the cars go, and then turn left and get inside of that pit cone to get on pit road. He was 11 and now falling way back. Good look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he tried to get underneath the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. It washed him up the track and now the 22 of Joey Logano looks to get inside Dale Jr. And the 27 spins trying to get the pit road. Now he's sideways. He's off the racetrack enough though that maybe I will stay green. Down. Nope, Clean NASCAR there, decides right, to sorry. throw a caution. So the caution will come out for the fifth time. As Paul Menard has struggled to get onto pit road, he had a little contact on the left side, caused a tire rub. They were in fear that it might cut that left left side tire down. That's just such a difficult position, you know, for for a driver to be in. He knew he had to get out of the way. He, the only thing he could do, he had a tire down. He had the whole field coming behind him. He knew he had to get out of the way. The spotter was telling him he just just couldn't get on pit road, and then troubles compounded themselves. This is what just happened to Paul Menard. So with the tire rub. He's going to try to get to pit road. And around he goes. And this is why the damage to the left side of this car caused the tire rub. Yeah, I think they had actually hit before in the middle of the corner. We saw saw him way up the racetrack before that. Tire was already smoking here. There was contact, I think, with the five car in the middle of the corner. 88 is making his way onto pit road. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. has decided to come to pit road, and quite a few are going to follow him. Kelly. As you see, the 88, the, he's got a little bit of damage to the nose, and they're going to try to fix that here under this caution. They're also going to give him four fresh Goodyear tires. He has been tight in and loose off, Mike. Denny Hamlin on pit road as well. His car has been a little bit tight. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment here as they complete service. Left sides. With 101 to go, it's a good decision to come get four tires, but I think the cars that came one pit stop ago, a lap 190, 
they're looking really good on their strategy. Two by two, the field entering three and four. Following the pace car, the lights are off on the pace car. We're getting ready to go back to green. Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski. We start one and two. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., and Joey Logano at the top five. Green flag back in the air. Kevin Harvick, a little more comfortable line for him on that outside. Kyle Busch tries to make it three wide for the lead as he went to the inside. Brad Keselowski holding on to that second spot now as he still looking underneath the four. Very close to contact as they get through three and four. Kevin Harvick out front. You feel the intensity starting to pick up as this race starts to wind down with less than 100 to go. The restarts are only going to get it more chaotic. Track positions are going to start to matter more and more. That's the big concern. The big concern at this point is you've run 200 laps. If you give up track position now, you're not going to get it back. They're going to fight you on every restart, fight you on every pit call. It's very hard to get track position in the last third of this race. Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, gap between the two, six tenths of a second. Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, and Martin Truex Jr., the top five. Impressive rebound for Matt Kenseth as he runs fourth. Even after the speeding penalty, he took a wave around. Now up into the top five. Mark Truex Jr. looking at the inside of Joey Logano. Pretty good rebound for the 78 team and Martin Truex Jr. After winning the race and running so well at the beginning of the season, it seemed as though they had fallen off the pace a bit. But Martin Truex Jr. running sixth today. Teammates nose to tail. Matt Kinsley just in front of Kyle Busch.
They were getting to that point in the race, Rick. All the crew chiefs on pit road have a number in their head how far they can go to the finish. We think they can all go 80 on fuel, but with so many cautions happening in the last 100 laps of this race on average, probably with 90 to go, 88 to go, if a caution comes out, they're going to pit, put fuel in it, and commit from there. So we're getting to that window where the crew chiefs are going to have to make a decision if the caution comes out. We talked about how the how the uh, restarts going to start to get become more and more chaotic. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of this. Look at Al Grover. He is all the way off the, way off the racetrack. He's on the apron, leaving. Look, turn, four wide, banging into each other. We're going to start seeing more and more of that. That's why it's going to get more chaotic. Look at on the 15 car. I mean, they're everywhere. We're going to start seeing more and more of that as this race continues. If we get more restarts, I think we will. <laughs> I don't think that's an if. You think a caution may come out still. Ooh, the close call for the 15. Clint Boyer hanging on to that car may have an issue. Way up the racetrack for the 15 of Boyer. And smoke now coming out from underneath. Got damage to the right rear of the 15. Quite a bit of body damage to the right rear quarter panel of the 15 of Clint Boyer, and we saw him chasing it up the track in three and four. Clint's been back toward the back of the field most of the day, trying to fight his way up, and it's just so hard back there. The racing's harder when you're running where he's been running all day versus where, where it is in the front. Points extremely important for Clint Boyer as he's 16th on the chase grid. Oh. Crazy loose getting in the corner, had to chase it up the racetrack and ended up bouncing off the wall. That was really loose getting in the corner. Justin Allgaier also with smoke coming out from the right front of the 51. Ryan Blaney was in the 21 just in front of that 15 of Clint Boyer. Also got a little bit loose when we saw Boyer into the wall. That is a lot of smoke. Three off of two. And the drivers are going to start screaming debris. Those that want a caution. A lot of smoke coming out from underneath the right front of that 51 of Justin Allgaier, though. How long will NASCAR let him stay on the track if he continues to smoke like this? Well, I think if it's there, he's not putting fluid down, NASCAR won't step in. They just advise the crew chief that you have a tire rub. It's not, not NASCAR's responsibility to make sure your tires don't rub. It's their responsibility to make sure that isn't oil going on the racetrack. So they're asking their spotters around the racetrack if the bumper, which the rear bumper of the 51, isn't getting darker where oil would be accumulating. So it looks to me to be tire smoke. You hear him reporting the oil pressure's good, which tells me that it's probably tire smoke. A good battle here between the three and the 24. Fighting for the ninth position. Austin Dillon has it, or Jeff Gordon has it. Austin Dillon has it now, as he was able to get by. So Gordon drops back to 10th. Austin Dillon up to ninth. Kevin Harvick, the race leader.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Pixels in theaters Friday. And by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Sprint. Check out the new all-in plan at Sprint.com slash all-in. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Want to take a look at who is on the move brought to you by Pixels. The 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. since the restart has made up 11 positions. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has made up nine and Ryan Newman nine as well. And Jeff you were pointing to those two as guys you'd like to maybe shine a spotlight on now as what they're doing as far as strategy goes. Well you have to look at where they pitted where they were running when they pitted. So Ryan Newman and his team they were running like 18th 19th. They've driven their way up to, to all the way up to 11th. Now when they pit if the caution comes out and they pit maybe they do too or maybe they do what everybody else does but they gain track position by doing that as opposed to the 88 they pitted running for they've given up a ton of track position to get this so in my eyes at 31 and the 17 of Stenhouse this was a great gamble for them they're going to come out winners in this the 88 is still a question Kelly when I spoke with crew chief Greg Ives earlier today he did tell me that he values track position he doesn't like to make his drivers work their way through the field multiple times through a race because he said it can be very mentally draining and taxing on him he wants him to be fresh at the end now Dale has seven top five finishes here at New Hampshire that's the most of anyone without a win and Greg Ives told me that look we've got two wins already when we come here we need to go out on a limb push the limits to get over the hump and have a dominant car we can gamble a little bit and when you do sometimes it bites you but sometimes it opens our minds to new things this might be one of those gambles Yeah, I mean, I agree with Greg Ives' theory that with two wins, you need to be aggressive and you need to try to get out there in front of the field. The issue is, like Jeff mentioned, they had track position and they gave it up to pit at lap 200. So while they are recovering nicely and they're back up to the 13th position, the trouble is the cars in front of him only have about between 20 and 10 lap older tires. So when the caution comes out, I feel that they aren't on a tire advantage than everyone else. So it's going to be uh, unique to see how they plan on getting back by those other 10. And, and you have to remember, there's cars on the racetrack that feel they can win the race. And there's cars on the racetrack that don't feel like they can win the race. So if you're the 31 and the 17, they've shown no speed to win the race today. They're gambling to improve their position. If you're running fourth or fifth, you need to gamble in order to win the race. It's a completely different strategy. So that's why I think, as far as I'm concerned, the 31 and the 17, that's the right strategy for them. The 31's racing for points. He's trying to get enough points to earn his way into the chase. For them, I think it was 100% the right thing to do. And the 17 chasing behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Roush Fenway Racing looking for a good finish to maybe kick things off in the 2015 season. Kevin Harvick and Brad Keselowski, they came onto pit road at lap 175 and lap 178 about 50 laps ago. Marty? And Rick, believe it, so, believe it or not, so far in 2015, Brad Keselowski has not led the most laps in a race until today. Now the only thing is he has to get back to the lead. Currently sits in second following Kevin Harvick. And on the radio a few moments ago, he was trying to diagnose with Paul Wolf how they get the lead back. We're pretty equal. He just got a little more restart speed than I do. The first lap, I don't turn. I wanted to. Can't tell. Maybe I'm on the splitter. I'm not sure. Be with pressure up already. Copy. Afterwards on the radio, he said, Paul, actually, the car is driving the best it's driven all day long. We just need a little bit more speed. So, Steve, we'll start. I'll turn to you. If Brad Kozlowski was your driver and he's telling you that, I need a little more speed, we're equal. I need to be better on that short run. How do you fix it on this last stop? Well, I think, Marty, that's the gamble. I think it's easy to fix short run speed, but it's very hard to fix it without hurting long run speed. If you're going to make a car take off a little bit better, and he says he's on, feels like he's on the splitter, Paul Wolf could perhaps add a half a pound or a pound of air across the front tires. But without a doubt, after 20 or 25 laps, that increased air pressure is going to hurt the long run speed. So it really comes down to how long they think the last run's going to be. There's 73 to go right here. The closer we get to 50 to go, perhaps Paul will put a little air in those front tires to help that two car take off. One driver who has started every cup race at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Jeff Gordon, running in the 10th spot. Mike? And Rick, it's been an incredibly challenging weekend for the 24 team. After a collision during practice on Saturday, 
they were forced to spend hours upon hours repairing the right rear quarter panel. In fact, Alan Gustafson, crew chief, was covered in Bondo dust all morning long, and they rolled through inspection. I think they were the last ones through it. Now they're encountering another problem. Gordon has radioed in saying that the lights on his dash have been blinking. He's not sure what's going on, so he's been switching back and forth between batteries, checking the voltmeter to make sure there's nothing going on. Perhaps, Steve, you could shed some light on that. Yeah, I mean, in these cars today, instead of mechanical gauges that run just off the pressures, they're electric gauges. So they go to a sensor and it sends a signal up to the gauge. So as you start to lose voltage, as the batteries get weak, those gauges start to go berserk and start flashing all different colors. Most of these teams out here today run two different batteries. You run on just one at a time. So what Jeff Ford does is he'll run a little bit on one battery, switch to the other battery, give one battery a chance to pool. The issue is if the alternator's not working and not charging either battery, Eventually, they're both going to go dead. You just hope that they have enough reserve to make 70 laps. Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. The top five, only 70 laps remaining. Welcome back to New Hampshire Motor Speedway and the five hour energy 301 NASCAR fans don't miss a race visit NASCAR.com forward slash calendar to download the official 2015 season schedule get pre race reminders and find out all about your local broadcast information. Kevin Harvick Brad Kozlowski. That's how close one and two are. We rode along with Kevin Harvick the gap under two car lengths now between the two two tenths of a second. We hadn't, seen, we hadn't seen Kevin move up the racetrack just yet. You know, he's still running that low line. I don't know if he's protecting a little bit, trying to keep uh, Keselowski from trying to get under him. But we've, he's, he's kind of stayed on the bottom as, a move, as opposed to moving up the racetrack like we saw him early in the race. And sometimes the racetrack won't allow you. Sometimes the track changes, gets rubbered up. Uh, you know, now more cars are doing it, or more cars are running the bottom, so there's more rubber on the bottom, and that's better. So just because it works early doesn't mean it's going to work all the time. And Kevin may have learned it's not as good. They still have to come to pit road. These two came onto pit road at lap 175 and 178, respectively. So now we're at 
sixty five laps almost sixty laps. We know that the pit windows around seventy eight to eighty three. Still about twenty twenty five laps away from having come, come to pit road. But there are others that came onto pit road at lap two hundred. Yeah, we, we it's been well documented. We talked about Ryan Newman, Ricky Stenhouse, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were all on pit road at lap 200, as well as Denny Hamlin. They can run 25 laps farther than Kevin Harvick. So, you know, that's going to be an advantage theirs. And now, why Ryan Newman and, and Ricky Stenhouse have gained track position, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has lost a little. But the one unique thing is when I look at the front of the 88 car, you know, there's some tape on it. So I also think that what we don't understand is how much they thought that damage might have been hurting the 88 car there on the left front. They obviously took some time to repair some damage. I think he had contact earlier with the 41. So these are the balances that the crew chiefs have to make. Greg Ives have to make a decision. Is it worth giving up track position to repair the nose? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has done a spectacular job right here in front of the 88 of using these tires to get back into this race. He'd been running outside the top 15 most of the day, but they pit, they get tires on, and they have driven it back up to the 12th position. Now with 25 laps more fuel on board than Kevin Harvick and the leaders, one well-timed caution, and these three guys can be in the catbird seat. Kevin Harvick continuing to put cars a lap down. 22 still on the lead lap. Welcome back to NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Racing from New Hampshire, presented by Pixels. Marty, what's going on in Pit Road? Mark Truex Jr. coming to Pit Road. This is what Cole Pern has done all afternoon long. 56 laps to go here. He will pit what theory should be for the final time. Four tires for Truex's car, just a little too free, and that's it. So they're going to see if this pitting early strategy continues to pay off. It's worked all day so far. We saw Kyle Busch come to pit road a little bit earlier. Some of the drivers complaining about maybe oil in turn two. Kevin Harvick thought it was the right front tire going down, but they're thinking it might just be some fluid in turn two. What's happening with Kelly, or starting Kelly, what's happening with Kyle Busch? Well, and he thought he saw a tire going down as well in the four, so they immediately said, if you think you see it going down, come into us, come into us, because he was struggling with the 18. He said he needed more entry security, and he was tight through the center. They gave him four Goodyear tires to finish this thing out. And with that pit stop, he is currently a lap down. We're expecting everyone to cycle through. Yeah, but what he is doing is gaining almost a second a lap on the leaders. Kyle Busch has run two laps in the 30.32nd range, while the leaders are running 31 30s. That's a second a lap. So as long as the caution doesn't catch the 18, he's gaining a tremendous amount of time on the leaders of Kevin Harvick and Brad Keselowski. There you see Jeff Gordon running that low line. Denny Hamlin just behind him. 
Brad Kozlowski running second, also thinking there might be something on the track. Here's what he said on the radio. Are you putting oil down, Joe? What's going on out here? Yeah, guys, guys are complaining about it. It patches and the car's just taking off. Yeah, do your best here. The board thought he had a flat, but it's the same thing, it's just oil. NASCAR's taking a look at the 23. J.J. Yaley, the rear end of that car, potentially putting maybe some rear end grease down. This is this is when the anxiety is the highest for a crew chief because he wants to pit early. He wants to bring his car on pit road like the 18 and the 78 did. Get those fresh tires. Get the faster lap times. But if you if you have NASCAR in your other year, you you have you scan NASCAR. And if they're talking about oil on the racetrack, you know if you pit, the caution comes out. You haven't officially ended your day, but it would be a heck of a recovery. Great battle for the lead. Here comes Brad Keselowski looking at the inside of Kevin Harvick. When they get behind these slower cars, it gives that second driver an opportunity to take Yellow advantage. Down. And the caution has come out. With 51 laps to go, NASCAR is going to take a look at turn two for potential oil. A lot of the drivers have been saying very slippery in turn two. See the fork of Harvick get catch the 40 of Castle off of turn four. Got to the, actually got to the back of him. Here's the 18 on four new tires. He's trying to get around the leaders to get back in the lap. In the lead lap, the two car gets in the back of the four car. Wasn't expecting the four to slow down that much. And that, that move by Kyle Busch is huge because this puts Kyle Busch back on the lead lap. So when everyone pits inside, here under the inside, caution, inside. I give you one guess who the leader's going to be. <laughs> you, you think Kyle Busch, after pitting at lap 244, which was only seven laps ago, will stay out? But that's why he pushed the issue there. That is an aggressive move because his crew chief is telling him, listen, you have got to get by these guys. Look at his eyes. He's looking in the mirror. He knows, he knows his lock inside, coming from the bottom, inside, from the back. Inside. You see, a, you see a car with cars on pit road. Here comes Kevin Harvick leading the lead lap cars onto pit road, Dave. Matt Kenseth's car was much tighter this run. Right side tires only and a wedge adjustment. Marty. Kevin Harvick actually said his car not very good right now was the quote. Car just a little bit too tight. I believe it's going to be four tires for Kevin Harvick. Brad Keselowski coming down. He said I might have some right front damage from where I hit the 18. A little bit too free for Keselowski. You see the two tire call by Paul Wolf for Brad Keselowski. Joey Logano, bottom right of your screen. It's going to be four tires for Logano. He said his car was way too loose off the corner. He said, I've got to have better drive off, off the road, off pit road. It'll be Brad Keselowski winning that race with those two Goodyear tires. And the real winner, as you just mentioned, Steve, Kyle Busch didn't come to pit road. He's going to be up front.
And welcome back to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. After pit stops have cycled through, Kyle Busch will be in front of the field. He pitted on lap 244. What an amazing run he has had to get to the front. But it wasn't without maybe a little controversy. You know, we build this all the time as, you know, you have to get a lucky break. Well, at some point in racing, you have to make your own luck. The 18 had to come to pit road early. He, here he is catching the two and the four, trying to unlap himself. An aggressive move, squeezes the two over, gets underneath the four. You know, why is that move so important? Because that unlapped him. A couple laps later, the caution comes out. Now he stays in the lead lap. Everyone pits. He becomes the leader. I have a guy back report oil. So he heard him talking, his spotter said they're talking about oil, so you have to assume you have to assume the caution's coming out. So if you know the caution's coming out and you see the leader in front of you, you're lap down, man, you gotta go. And Kyle Bush did a great job of pushing the issue because that that now he's in the best spot on the racetrack to possibly win this race. And it all started with that move. They seem pretty happy. Let's listen to the radio. Take care of it here. Man, we are in the catbird seat. You got both got back on the lead lap. Good job there, man. Uh, appreciate you playing it safe. And he just decided to shut the engine off and glide for a while, saving fuel. Does he need to? 54, uh, he, he came in on lap 244, so potentially he, he could be 57 laps. I think he's fine on fuel. The other thing you do as a driver when you shut the car off like that is not only you save gas, but it actually helps with the engine temperatures. If you shut the car off, roll a little bit, fire it back up, you can bring the water temperature down. And some of these short tracks, when you roll around really slow, especially a place like Loud, you want to run as much tape as possible for all the downforce. But with these slow pace car speeds, you don't want to get that engine too hot. You can almost damage it under yellow. So he's just probably maintaining everything, doing a heck of a job. That is a perfect example of, of you know, bad luck turned to good luck um, and, and not by chance. You know, great job by the driver. Seven wave arounds will go by the pace car, including the 78. The 78 will have to take a wave around. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. And it's turned out to be a great day here in, in the New England area. 75 miles just a bit northwest of Boston, about 42 miles from the Atlantic coast. So we got 45 to go. We've talked all day long about restarts being important. This is right now in the race. This is the most important restart. We may get one that's more important later, but right now you can win this race if you have a good restart. And we've also heard Brad Keselowski say, I'm not good on the short run, but after I get going, I can catch up. We'll see how he does on this restart. Kyle Busch on the outside, Brad Keselowski on the inside. We're back to racing in New Hampshire. Denny Hamlin didn't get a good restart at all. Bottled up that inside line. Matt Kenseth was all over the back bumper of the two of Brad Keselowski. Now the race for second. Here comes Kenseth. Kenseth trying to take the position away down the back stretch. And Harvick made it three wide in the back there to gain position. Remember, he's on four tires. Everybody else is on two. Carl Edwards, who started on the pole, now has worked his way back up into the top four. Kozlowski holding on to second. Matt Kenseth third. Three wide as they go into turn number one. Joey Logano on the inside. See all the guys on the outside. Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards. They were trying to pinch him down, not give him that lane that has a little more banking. Matt Kenseth again doesn't let him get above that line. Going to keep him pinched off, getting in the corner. And that's to not let them get in the, the gas as fast, get he's, back on the accelerator. Period have less grip. The car doesn't turn as well. It doesn't make as much rear grip. It's just slower down there, plain and simple. Big lead for Kyle Busch over a second after the restart. Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, Carl Edwards. Again, earlier we heard on the radio, Brad Keselowski saying, I'm not as quick on the short runs or right off the restart but I think I'm as good once we have the run going. So will he be able to reel in Kyle Busch? The other advantage Kyle Busch has over Brad Keselowski is with that uh, fortunate opportunity to pit under green is he got four tires. So not only did he get a lucky break by the timing of the caution, worked hard to get past the leader, he also has four tires with fresh left sides. It'll be interesting to see if the two car of Brad Keselowski with only fresh right sides can run him down. 
teammates working against each other. We saw Carl Edwards trying to get by that 20 of Matt Kenseth. Joe Gibbs racing, continuing to look strong. Running one, three, and four. Now one, four, five as Keselowski and Logano were second and third. Marty. Rick. Brad Keselowski trying to chase down Kyle Busch. He just radioed to Paul Wolf a moment ago. He said, Paul, it's just not working here. Remember, as you mentioned, took two tires on the last stop. He told Paul Wolf, I, I need left tires. Got to have those. Paul Wolf said, hey, my bad. It was a bad call to take two tires there. But, Steve, sometimes two tires looks very tempting, doesn't it? But it helps in these longer runs to finish a race. Well, you know, Marty, it's easy to say now that, man, I should have put four tires on you. But that longer pit stop is going to lose track position. So while right now they're disappointed they don't have left side tires on it, that's a hard decision to make when the cars come down pit road. I liked the call for two tires in that situation. You know, if it wasn't for the fortune to break the 18 had, the two would be the leader. So Paul Wolf has played the best strategy he can. But at some point, you have to just really hope that your balance of your race car matches the two tires when you, when you put them on your car. It appears like right now it hasn't. Great yeah. fight for the top five. Three cars, including Kevin Harvick, who just took the fifth spot away from Carl Edwards. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the most top five finishes at this racetrack without a win. Trying to add to that number. And would like to get back to victory lane. And we talked about two tires versus four tires. Here's Harvick. We know he has four tires, but he's in fifth place. Keselowski's in second. If this thing goes green, can Harvick run him down with those four tires? That's the question. I think if the caution comes back out, having four tires will probably be an advantage. But is there enough time to make up having the four tires versus two tires? It's all about track position. And Kyle Busch has it, and he's doing a good job with it because he's consistently running the fastest laps on the racetrack. And if the caution comes out again, you have Brad Keselowski, who's going to restart on that inside line, which seems to be hindering the inside line because he can't get up to speed as quickly. We talk about race strategy. What line you restart in can be just as important as how you pit and how many tires you put on. You can make a great decision to gain track position and line up third inside of that second row, get bogged down in one and two, come off from turn two and six or seven. It instantly makes a good strategy look bad. Your pit call didn't change, just your restart did. Austin Dillon now has reeled in the 19 of Carl Edwards. Austin Dillon in the eighth spot. Carl Edwards holding on to seven. Yeah, Austin and his team have had a solid day all day. They've run well to begin with. They've been the best RCR car uh, throughout the whole day. So battling right here for a top 10 spot with some really good race cars. Let's go back to Kyle Busch just a moment also. Remember the situation he's in with points. He's got to get enough points to get in the top 30. If he's going to make the chase, he has the wins, but he's got to get got to get those points. I counted him out about a month ago. I said, there's no way he might be getting ready to win his third race of the year. That's the best way to get points, win races. He continues to impress. He has the top speed. Kyle Busch running impressive all day. Over 130 miles per hour. The average speed for Kyle Busch. Presented by Sprint, join all in wireless from Sprint. Get unlimited talk, text, and high speed data. And pick your smartphone for just $80 a month. So Harvick just cleared the 20 of Kenseth. Uh, that moved him up into fourth spot. But again, does he have enough time? He's been the second fastest car, sometimes the fastest car. But does he have enough time to run Keselowski down on Logano with those two tires? Take another look at this pass. Kevin Harvick working on Matt Kenseth. And Matt didn't put up a really big fight. He knew Harvick was coming and coming really hard. And uh, Matt was, you know, respectful driver said, hey, man, you're a little better than I am right now. Go take the spot. You'll get that favor return to him later. And not only is it respectful, but Matt is also looking out for him because if they race side by side for too long. The cars behind them are going to catch them. And now Matt's going to lose more positions. Team Penske is running second and third behind Kyle Busch. Team Penske won the two races in 2014. No team has ever won three straight races at New Hampshire. So if Brad Keselowski or Joey Logano is able to get by Kyle Busch and grab this win, that would be the first time in history. Now, Jeff, you've won here more than anyone. I want to know as a driver, I've always wanted to know this, and my drivers never seem to tell me the truth. 
The 18, he's out. This may be no a, different for you. He has, a, he has a two-second lead. Are you thinking, save a little? If there's a caution, do I need to save a little tire? Am I trying to save? I mean, how comfortable in the driver's seat is a two-second lead? Well, I, th I think a two-second lead is pretty big at this point in the race. I think you do pull a little bit back because if you get that caution, anything you can do to save your tires now can pay back later. So you want to get as big of a lead as you can in case you have a problem. Let's say you run up on some lap cars. Let's say something happens out of your control. The more gap you have, the better chance you have of staying in front of everybody. But once you get a certain gap, I think then it's a matter of maintaining your position to the second place car. Want to go through the field, starting with Kyle Busch and Kelly Stavis. Once again, at the lead of this race, remember he finished runner-up in three of the last four. He's won two of the last three races of this season. His crew chief, Adam Stevens, saying they are absolutely not afraid to take risks to win the race, even though they're still working to get back in time inside the top 30 in points, Marty. Kelly, it might not be a win for Brad Kozlowski today. Who knows, we might get another restart. But here's what they can take away from today. Brad told me last week, listen, we've been about an 8th to 10th place car lately. We just need to show some speed. I think Kentucky here at New Hampshire, they've certainly shown some speed in that Penske camp. Right behind him, his teammate Joey Logano, he told me Friday, the one thing we have to walk away with from this race, we have to walk away with some knowledge of how we can get better in September. One thing Logano's going to want, a little more drive off he's complained about that all day long Kevin Harvick right behind him in the fourth position we're going to see if those four tires can work their way up through the field Harvick's been very happy with the car except for that last run a little too tight from the middle of the corner off in that last run for Harvick the first guy to clinch a chase spot last week Dave Matt Kenseth's car does not like two right side tires only. That's something for the notebook. And Jason Ratcliffe told me they want to know what they need when they come in back come back in September. And don't forget they've had all kinds of weather this weekend. The notebooks have been flying for the chase race, Kelly. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 19th. He's had to work his way back through the field a couple of times. He's back up to sixth, looking for his fourth straight top 10 finish here in New Hampshire. Carl Edwards in the seventh position. Another strong run for that 19 team. And Carl told me that he and Darian Grubb have been really focusing on communication lately, building this team. He said it's been a rough process, but it's worked, and it's gotten them here. It'll be another top ten if they can finish here for the 19 team. Rick. Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick fighting for the third spot. Logano has it. Harvick running in that fourth position, trying to chase him down. Looks as though he's going to have the inside line. Let's see if he can make the pass. Got moved up the racetrack and kind of used Harvick's groove. You know, he got up the racetrack, but was able to leave the corner with a lot of grip and a lot of speed. So it looked like Harvick was going to turn right underneath him and pass him. But the 22 of Logano found that grip up top, accelerated, and drove away from him. The, the laps in time are winding down. We only have 25 laps to go. Kyle Busch has a 1.2 second lead over Brad Keselowski. So Brad Keselowski has closed the gap about eight tenths of a second. We ha see Harvick now working the high line. See if he can keep the momentum up and get by Logano. We've seen this time and time again in the finishes of these races. It's not only how good your car is, but how well you get through lap traffic. As the 18 of Kyle Busch worked through just two slower lap cars, he ran two laps pretty far off the pace. Brad Keselowski, he got through those lap cars a little bit quicker. Now you see Joey Logano working in the inside of these lap cars. Kevin Harvick's trying to follow. There's more time to be gained and lost on how you go through traffic than there seems to ever be of just these clean laps trying to outrun your competitor. Kyle Busch, 1.3 seconds, separating he and Brad Keselowski. Joe Gibbs racing extremely strong this whole weekend in New Hampshire. They won the pole for both the Xfinity race yesterday and today's race, and they won the race yesterday with Denny Hamlin. Now they're looking to do the sweep if they can keep Kyle Busch out front. Mike, what's going on with Jamie McMurray? Well, you know, Rick, uh, Jamie McMurray and this team came in with such high hopes, but it sounds like the car is giving up on him. McMurray radioed in not too long ago saying he thinks it might be blowing up. He's going to ride it out, but he's not sure if he'll make it or not. Unfortunate for McMurray. Hey, that's big right there because McMurray, he is the first car in the points that has not won a race. He is trying to get himself in the chase with a chance to win the championship with points. Blowing a motor up, breaking an engine will really hurt his opportunity to do that. He's not the only one that's concerned about that engine as well, because Kyle Busch with a 1.6 second lead, he's hoping that engine in the one makes it all the way to the finish. He doesn't want any cautions coming out. Dylan Hart Jr.
close the gap on Matt Kenseth. Dale Hart Jr. sitting on four fresh tires. We mentioned earlier Matt Kenseth on two. Dale Jr. and them had to pit, repair the nose, gave up a little track position, recovering decent up to the sixth position. He ran earlier in the top five. I think, you know, that's their goal. It's to at least get back to where they were before they had to pit and repair the nose. Trying to work around that 20 of Matt Kenseth, still not able to do it. This right racetrack is so hard to pass on. It's a great example of how it is so difficult to pass. You can see the 88 just working the 20. But, and he's quicker than the 20, but the 20 is going to hold his line. Uh, Matt Kenseth is one of those drivers that makes no mistakes. Uh, Junior is going to have to do everything in his power to get by a guy like Matt Kenseth. And one of the differences here is right now the 20 and the 88 really don't have any cars to deal with as far as lap down cars. Different for the two of Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch. Those drivers are still negotiating through the lap down cars. Yes, you see that Dale Jr. in three and four, he diamonded his corner. He moved up in the middle to try to get a straight run off. You see here in one and two, he kind of just chases the 20 down in the corner, waits to get the gas a little later, tries to cut down low on exit. But Matt is doing a great job of just consistently running the middle of the racetrack, making it very difficult to get by. See, this is the diamond I was talking about. He goes above the 20, and as he gets in the gas, he's going to turn down across and try to get that run to the inside of the 20 down the front stretch. This time he accomplishes it. Moving up in the middle of the corner allowed the 88 to get a straighter shot off, give him a little more front straightaway speed, but Matt, he's not going to give it up easily. No, he's not. And you know what's fun to watch about these two? They both came into the Sprint Cup Series at the same time in 2000, battled for Rookie of the Year. It was actually Matt Kenseth who won Rookie of the Year that year against Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s popularity has skyrocketed, obviously, since then. And they're still good friends today. They uh, they get along very well. They have a lot of respect between the two of them. Uh, they race each other very clean. They're gonna race hard, but they race hard each other and clean. clean. I was gonna say great racing between the two of these, and now we're seeing shifting out of the 88. And he downshifts into third right here. He's going to pick up the gas. You're going to see him take his right hand off the steering wheel when he gets up on the straightaway. Pulls it back into fourth gear. Checks his mirror. He's trying any way he can to get by the 20. The reason he's shifting is it just gives you more RPMs. It gives you more power leaving the corner. This is a racetrack where you can use that power. So there's an advantage in having more RPMs and more power to the rear tires to try to out accelerate the car in front of you. It also, I always believe, it made the car drive better. It's, it's easy to downshift a little too early and make you loose getting in the corner. But if you don't do that, RPMs to me just make a car, kind of put it in the racetrack if that makes any sense. It always made the car drive better, turn into more RPMs. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, one and two. Kyle Busch currently 33rd in Sprint Cup Series points. He's just 57 points behind David Gilliland, who's in that 30th spot. Already has made up 30 points today, and they've been fighting through lap traffic, both he and Brad Keselowski. Here's what they had to say on the radio. That was the communication of the two team, as we just saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. get by Matt Kenseth. It took him about 10 laps to make that pass. Yeah, it did. It's hard to pass him. What you heard there was, you know, the crew chief, driver, all that. They want the spotter to go tell the spotter of the car they're trying to lap, hey, give us space. But you know what? The spotters don't drive the race cars. The drivers drive the race cars. The drivers have the mirrors, as the spotter said. It's up to them to get out of the way of the leader. They don't? You should have told me that a long time ago, because I have yelled at a lot of spotters over the radio. It just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back into the top five. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, one and two. 1 1.6 seconds separating the top two. Kevin Harvick, he's four and a half seconds back from Kyle Busch. He will need a caution if he wants a chance at winning this race. And here right there, Kevin Harvick just playing with the throttle. When you get late into this run, it really comes down to car control, throttle control, trying to hook up those rear tires. And just at this point, they're wore out. They're exhausted. Yeah, it sounds like to me Harvick's not shifting. Yeah. I don't hear I don't hear an increase in RPMs. It sounds like to me he's decided he does not want to shift. And 
long We're find out right here. Yes. You see both hands on the steering wheel. Uh, no effort to grab the shifter and downshift, so he's staying in fourth gear all the way around the racetrack. And with only two and a half seconds to the car in front of him, at some point, it's risk versus reward. If Kevin Harvick just does a good job running smooth laps, he's going to end up, has a good chance to end up in the third position, where if you go down, you start shifting. If you haven't shifted all day, now's not the time to give it your first shot at it. Yeah, because it's not easy to do. I mean, you know, it's not easy to, to get in the corner and downshift without locking the rear tires up. Wheel hopping and those kind of things. So with 10 to go, maybe it's best just to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to try to learn right now. Just finish it out. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They are the top five. Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards, Austin Dillon, Jeff Gordon, Kurt Busch, the top ten. Three of the last four races, Kyle Busch out in front. Kyle Busch will lead. 87 laps now with nine to go. He could lead 96. It won't be the most laps, but as far as gaining points, he continues to gain almost as many points as you can possibly gain. Yeah, when you talk about points racing, the best way to gain points is to win races. It's that simple. You get the maximum points, you get bonus points, you try to lead the most laps, but if that's the only thing you haven't done right for the whole day, that's a heck of a day to just lose out on that one point. Brad Keselowski is going to end up leading the most laps. He's led 100 laps in this race, but running second, and falling back behind Kyle Busch just a little bit further. He's 1.5 seconds back now from race leader Kyle Busch. And so many crew chiefs are going to be scratching their head when they leave here today. They call two tires and four tires and fuel position and all this stuff. And Kyle Busch, with eight to go, is leading this race because he pitted under green and then unlapped himself. And then the caution came out. So many things have to align for that to work out. You know, that is not a strategy you want to play. That's a strategy you're forced to play that happens to work out. Kyle Busch coming up on the lap traffic once again as he tries to negotiate through it. He hopes that the two of Brad Keselowski will have as much difficulty getting by these cars when he does catch up to them. And no driver wants to see two wide in front of you, do you, Jeff? You see the 51 and the 40 racing side by side. They've got it single file now, but they take up a lot of racetrack. Yeah, this is already a long seven laps. You can see some people having to pit because they stayed out through the pass round before, but. Uh, I'm telling you from being in this spot with six to go. This is very, very long. These six laps seem like they'll never end. You're just hoping there's no caution. You know if there's no caution, you're probably going to win this race. So you, you don't want to cause a caution. Don't get in anybody. Don't make the caution and hope nobody else does. But these last race laps take forever. The gap 1.2 seconds between Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski as Keselowski will try to work to the inside of the 40. Now he's going to go to the outside of the 40 of Atlantic Castle who's coming to pit road. Kyle, Kyle Busch, Busch. Five. five laps to go in New Hampshire. That, and that's got to frustrate Kyle Busch. He has to work to pass the lap of the 40 car. He pits, the two gets by him for free. And it's only a second now between the top two. So Brad Keselowski has closed the gap to just one second with, Glenn, with just under five laps to go. Brett Moffitt in the 34 in between first and second. We'll see how Brad Keselowski gets by that 34. He's able to go to the inside on the straight. Doesn't slow him down and doesn't change his entry into turn number one. And once again, Kyle Busch coming up on some more lap cars. And the lead is under a second. Less than four laps to go. Does Brad Keselowski have enough time to get to the 18 of Kyle Busch? He's going to need a little bit of help with some lap cars, I think. If they can just slow Kyle down just a little bit, anything can happen, but he's probably going to have, to have a little bit of help. Three, Three laps to go. The gap, seven tenths of a second. Brad Keselowski continuing to close that gap. Keselowski had the fastest lap time the last time by. A clean racetrack in front of him. He can see the back bumper of the 18 and he closes the gap, but a big wiggle by the two of Brad Keselowski coming out of turn number four. This time by two laps to go. Brad Keselowski, the two car, he's driving in the corner exceptionally hard. He's trying to use the use the corner entry to make up this gap. And you can saw he got a big wiggle, but you got it. You know, you got to try something. If you don't try something, it's not going to happen. Brad can afford a mistake. When you're trying to catch the leader, and you make a mistake. You're trying hard. Kyle Busch cannot afford a mistake. When you're the leader of the race, you have to force the guy in second to catch you. Don't make a mistake and open the door for him. 
Kyle Busch looking for as many points as he can get to try to break into the top 30 in the points to get into the chase. White flag in the air. The distance between one and two, a second and a half. And the seven into the wall. Alex Bowman is going to hit the wall. The white flag was displayed to the 18 of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch will win at New Hampshire. Three out of the last four races, Kyle Busch has won. What a rebound he has made on his season. It's incredible what he's been able to do since his injury. Uh, his team stayed together without him being there. Just an incredible job by, by everybody involved, not just Kyle. How about Adam Stevens? He's only had Kyle Busch in a cup car. Good day, pal. I love you. Good job. Great job, Three guys. Wins. What an nice impressive there, guys. Awesome job. Awesome job. This stretch, man, this has been cool. Let's keep it up. Ain't no give up in this 18. Kyle Busch broke his leg and foot in the Xfinity race to start the season off in Daytona in February. After missing 11 races in the Sprint Cup Series, he's able to come back. NASCAR told him, if you're able to win and get into the top 30, you will be eligible for the chase. Well, he was able to get the first win at Sonoma. He's backed that up with wins at Kentucky and now at New Hampshire. Now it's a situation of getting into the top 30 in points, and he continues to eat away at that point difference between he and 30th. What a great run again for the 18 team. Kelly Stapps. Rick, so many different strategies at play. Adam Stevens called the winning one, but how about the work of Kyle Busch on lap himself in short order? Yeah, you know, uh, he thought he had a flat there. Um, somebody was putting oil down, and we drove through it, and uh, he did the same thing and came to pit road, and we were ready for him. And he was very disciplined not to speed, and we had a good stop. And, uh, you know, fresh tires with that many laps was a big deal, and he proved it and got back out there and uh, unlapped himself. And, and uh, lo and behold, the caution came, and uh, it was over from there. Three wins in the last four races for the 18 team, Rick. Yeah, they have been incredible. And how about Joe Gibbs racing at New Hampshire? Won the race, the Xfinity race yesterday, and they win today in the Sprint Cup Series. Denny Hamlin yesterday, Kyle Busch today. And all we heard in the garage was Joe Gibbs racing, Joe Gibbs racing. There was a tremendous amount of worry in the garage about trying to beat these teams. They just had, from the time they unloaded, they had good speed. But, you know, Kyle Busch and his team, they're finding a way to get more out of everything from Joe Gibbs right now. It's just incredible what they've been able to do. And Monday morning's NASCAR's winning driver will be Dan's guest in the Man Cave. The Dan Patrick Show is on NBC Sports Live Extra weekdays from 9 to 12 p.m. And the celebration will continue for Kyle Busch. When we come back, he'll be in victory lane again. What an incredible run we have seen not only Joe Gibbs racing but in particular the 18 team and Kyle Busch and what a rebound how mentally focused this driver has become on getting into the chase and running for this championship. Let's go to Dave Burns with Kevin Harvick who finished third today and led quite a bit was it strategy at the end Kevin that really got you. 
I think we had the right strategy. Uh, just had a little uh, miscue there on the last pit stop, but those guys have done great all year. They did great today, and, and um, just took me a little longer to, to get around a couple of those cars and lost the track position. We just got to thank everybody at our Jimmy Johns, Budweiser, Chevrolet for everything they do. Uh, you know, we were off on Friday and we're able to really rebound and have a good Saturday and a good race car today. So it's encouraging for two months. I was going to say, you got enough speed for September now? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we, we got to work on our long run speed just a little bit, but still, that was probably our biggest benefit today, but I think we can be better. Good result for Kevin Harvick in the four car. Fourth place finish for Joey Logano, the guy who won here the last time we were at this racetrack back in September. Still pretty good performance, I would say. How would you assess it? Uh, fourth. <laughs> um, I thought overall my, my team executed really well. Todd made some great calls uh, with our Shell Penzo Ford, kept us uh, towards the front all day and um, gave us a tire advantage when we, when we could. And we were able to uh, you know move forward when, when we needed to, just um, not enough. <laughs> you know, I, I like the call that he made in putting those four tires on. We started picking a few of them off, but um, you know, just to kind of level out, and uh, it's just really hard to pass, really hard to uh, get air on the nose when this car's in front of you and, and make those passes. So uh, it was challenging, um, but you know, you're too late. By the time you try to work your way through the field, you burnt your stuff up. Well, Rick, you can understand somewhat disappointment not winning after all. This is Joey Logano's favorite track is his home track, a place where he won back in September. Yeah, Mike, a very familiar sight here, though. The 18 in victory lane once again. We go to Marty Snyder. And Kyle Busch, what else can you say about him in his eighth race back? He wins his third race of 2015, and that deserves a little celebration. Plenty of celebration for Kyle Busch, who does it at New Hampshire. And this comeback is looking more real by the moment. All right, let's be honest. You come back in May at Charlotte. Did you sit, think you'd be sitting here eight races in with three wins, Kyle? No, I don't think any of us would have, you know. But, uh, man, this is uh, such an awesome win, such an awesome comeback. And I just can't say enough about everyone at Joe Gibbs Racing, the work that they put in. Uh, our cars are a lot better than what they were a couple of years ago, last year, I guess. But, uh, man, it's so much fun to... To, uh, a, lot of, a lot of confetti debris. Yeah, no kidding. It's uh, it's just so much fun to win these races and to win with this group of guys, Adam Stevens and this bunch, all my pit crew since 2008, man, they deserve all this. So uh, can't say no about Interstate Batteries. Happy birthday, Norm Miller and uh, M&M's Crispy, Toyota, Sprint. This Camry was awesome today and uh, Monster Energy, appreciate them. And of course, uh, the fans, you know, this is a crazy sport and you never know how it's always going to turn out. But uh, man, that that, uh, that coming to pit road, I, I thought I had a tire going down and there was oil on the track. And luckily I got back to the lead lap before the yellow came out, but man, that saved us right there. How did you get back to the lead lap? And were you aware, hey, this might be the pass for the win, you never know. That was, uh, well, I didn't know, you know, but. Um, but it turned out to be. It did, you know, five laps. I just drove as hard as I could when I caught off pit road and knew I needed to get those guys. You know, they were telling me the 38 car was the lucky dog spot. And once I got there, I was like, okay, um, what else do I got to do, you know, to get back on the lead lap? But I figured it was the four still. It was, and, um, you know, they were, the four and the two were, were really the class of the field I felt like today. Our car was a close third, but, man, just on the long runs, our front end would die, and we just couldn't turn. So we got some work to do to get better, to be able to uh, outright win this thing when we get back here in, uh, in a couple months. I want to go over some numbers with you real quick. You have gained 70 points in the last two weeks. I think we're going to bring in young Braxton here. You gained 70 points in two weeks, 58 out of 30th. How real is it starting to seem like this might happen? Uh, every week, man. You know, we just got to keep doing our deal. Every week it's been getting better and better. It's uh, it's certainly, um, you know, the right thing to do to win races and to gather those points. But uh, to do it in the fashion we have been, you know, just winning these things, I mean, that, that's just spectacular. That's awesome. So uh, here's the wife. And that's the most important thing, a kiss for Brexton and a kiss from Samantha. And this might all happen. Kyle Busch, very happy in victory lane, and he gets to celebrate with the family. Braxton even giving a little fist bump there. Mike? And it was a long day at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway for Brad Keselowski, a second-place finish. How would you describe the run as you guys tried to track down the, the eventual winner, Kyle Busch? Really fast car. Uh, proud of everyone, uh, Penske, Team Penske, for the fast car. It looked like you were driving in exceptionally deep in those corners, doing everything you could possibly do. What were you do, doing behind the wheel to try to catch him? Uh, just hoping to catch a break and uh, didn't catch one, Mike. Good run. Brad Keselowski's first top five since April. Reason to smile. Take a look at the unofficial results. Once again, Kyle Busch, it's his 32nd Sprint Cup Series win. 
His last win came last week. Brad Keselowski, a disappointed second. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr., another top five. He continues to rack up top fives here at New Hampshire, but still has not won. Yeah, and Austin Dillon in eighth. I think that was, that was a really good run for those guys. And here's Ryan Newman in 11th. They used that strategy to get themselves up to 11th. Good call by Luke Lambert. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, disappointing day. day. Disappointing day for the 48 and Jimmy Johnson. They obviously want to retool to come back here. This will be a chase track. They're going to have to be better than that. Danica Patrick tried fuel strategy to stay up, had to come in and pit late, finishes 24th. Kyle Larson, 31st. He had a 2.45 finish average coming into today's race. That's going to change. Alex Bowman, you saw the fire under the right front of the number seven early on in this race. Take a look at our chase grid. Now with just seven races remaining before the chase, all the drivers on the left side with wins. The one that's not up on that left side, it's not in the win column, pushed because he hasn't broke into the top 30 in points. He has to do that. Now only 58 points out of that 30th spot. But these guys on the right, Eric Almarola moves up into the 16th position ahead of Clint Boyer now. A yeah, bad day for Clint Boyer. And again, Jamie McMurray gave up a lot of points. He was pretty safely in 11th, but gave up a lot of points. Ryan Newman continues to climb his way up. He's the guy they got to worry about. He did it last year. He's shown he can do it again this year. You really have to commend Kyle Busch on what he has been able to accomplish in the 2015 season. To start off the season in the Xfinity race at Daytona, hard into the inside wall. He breaks his leg and foot. Yeah, an impact. Nobody ever wants to see a hard impact like that. Kyle Busch, obviously, injury, but he comes back. Sonoma breaks through to get to victory lane, that all-important win. If he thought that was great to get a win, well, why not get two? We go to Kentucky, had one of the fastest cars there, chases down Joey Logano, gets his win. I mean, if two's good, three's better. Kyle Busch, a little lucky, hard driving, saved his lap, got a break with the caution, but then drove a great 40 laps to the finish to be the winner. So after he has come back, he has already won three races in the Sprint Cup Series. So Kyle Busch, I'm sure talking to either coach Joe Gibbs or J.D. Gibbs as he is enjoying his time in victory lane. Let's go back to Kelly. Dale Earnhardt Jr. adds another top five finish to his resume here at New Hampshire. Dale, what was it like? You had to work your way through the field, not once but twice. Yeah, we had a little power issue on the, um, on the car. Saw some things on the gauges and just was real down on power. But uh, worked real hard to try to make the car better in the corner and uh, had to drive real hard every, all day long. So um, pretty decent car, just need to be a little bit better, you know, if we want to come back here and do well in the chase, we got to get a little more speed. The whole company needs to uh, just keep working and we'll get it. As you said, this is a track we'll come back to see in the chase. So what's your biggest takeaway from today? We were tightening the center, never really bit of it. will really fix it. We're shearing on throttle. A lot of guys are getting a little more drive off than us. and. Uh, even with the power issue, still shearing on throttles. So it's, uh, it, it, we'll work on it. Awesome company. We've got a lot of resources. We'll figure it out. Long, hard, hard fought day here for Dale Jr. And finishing right behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. is Matt Kenseth, who came home with a sixth place finish. How would you describe your day? Uh, you know, it was solid. We just, you know, in practice, we're never as good as a 19 or 18. And uh, uh, couldn't quite run with them today. But overall, it was a solid day. It's about where we ran between between third and eighth and kind of finished in the middle there. So it was a solid day for our Dollar General uh, camera. We wanted, wanted a little bit more, but it was a great day for the company. You speak of a great day for the company. For the second week in a row, a Joe Gibbs racing car is in victory lane. It's the same one, but still strong runs out of the entire organization, it seems. What have you guys hit on? Well, if I knew exactly that, I sure wouldn't tell anybody, especially after you were like last year. But uh, great people back there, and um, you know, everybody kept their head up last year when we didn't run, you know, up to expectations. And uh, this year, all four cars have been have been really fast, and I feel like they're getting faster. So uh, it's a good time for good time of year for that. Hopefully, we can keep improving on that, and um, you know, have what we need when we come back here in September. Can't blame Matt for not giving any secrets away, but you know, he feels pretty good about the way the cars are running right now, Kelly. Eighth is a career best finish for Austin Dillon here at New Hampshire, but you got ice bag in hand. How grueling was that race? That was a tough one for sure. Um, you know, it was hot out there, but uh, worked hard. I'm proud of Slugger and the guys. The Dow Chevy was really fast and just worked hard throughout the race, got our track position, and just proud of these guys. How much did you have to work on this car throughout the race? We worked on it from the time we got here. Really struggled with the front end turning, but I'm just so proud of the guys for making it work. And it was good after the Xfinity race to come back and have a run like this. Solid results for the three car.
Well, let's chat with Joe Gibbs, and uh, obviously it's been a good couple of weeks for your race team, but you've coached a lot of athletes in your career. You've seen them on rolls. You've seen momentum. Talk about the role Kyle is on right now, and have you ever seen him, seen him as focused as he is right now? I think he's totally focused. I think ever since the injury, uh, well, before the injury, but he has, ever since that injury, he's been on it. He's been, to come back in 11 weeks and do what he did at a road race, win at Kentucky, come back here. I just want to say thanks to Interstate Batteries, to Norm, to Scott, everybody back there, thanks to Interstate, and to JD, and everybody back home, everybody at the shop that works on these things. I want to say a big thanks to you guys, too. Hey, we appreciate it. As you guys sit down in competition meetings and you start looking at these points, does it start to dawn on you that this might actually happen and he might make it into the top 30? Well, I, I said it was going to be extremely hard. We had averaged 17 last year, and he was on it. So I, this year we start off having to get about 15, I think. Uh, average 15th and so I don't know what it is now but I know this is sure helping <laughs> I'll put it that way. exactly right Joe Gibbs told me that after the Kentucky race he wasn't sure what Kyle Busch was going to do or how he would react he said Monday morning 9 a.m. he was at the shop ready to meet and talk about how they could win New Hampshire which Rick they've done they have done it an incredible day for Kyle Busch they used a little different strategy to end up in victory lane as he's hanging on to that lobster in victory lane the lead early, able to get by the 19 of Carl Edwards, take the top spot. Then he pitted under green. At the time, I think we weren't exactly sure if this was going to pay off for him, but this move here made it all worthwhile. Oh, it wasn't a question if it was going to pay off. I was sure it wasn't going to pay off, but Kyle Busch fought hard, got back on the lead lap, had a timely caution. They got everyone else in the lead lap to pit. Kyle Busch assumes the lead. Start was able to hold off the two of Brad Keselowski and after a caution coming out on the last lap after the white flag had been displayed Kyle Busch wins his third race in the last four races of course since he's bounced back Sonoma he wins Daytona a 17th place finish Kentucky New Hampshire both with victories so Kyle Busch and Joe Gibbs racing definitely on a roll. So Joe Gibbs racing, a lot of success, especially here. We saw Denny Hamlin win the Xfinity race last night, yesterday. We see now how Kyle Busch is able to get to victory lane. That's his second win. You've got four wins here. What are they hitting on? Well, I think what they're hitting on is their entire company's gotten better at every kind of racetrack. We saw how well they ran last week. We talked about Joe Gibbs racing. We, they all had wins, but they really weren't running that great. You know, right. they would run well. One team would run well, but the other ones weren't. But now they're all running well. So I don't know what they hit on. And Matt Kenseth told us he wasn't going to tell us what they would hit <laughs> on, and I don't blame him. But without a doubt, whatever they've done, it's worked everywhere, not just this style of racetrack. Yeah, it's unique when you find speed that you see it from a track like Kentucky all the way to Loudoun from the Sprint Cup side to the Xfinity side. You know, it, it tells me that they've found some basic fundamental things that have helped their race cars go faster. And I'm a true believer in momentum. Without a doubt, Kyle winning at Sonoma had to be uplifting for the company. They've played off that momentum. But you have to have fast cars for momentum to work. And right now they have both. I know we have seven races to go before the chase, but you mentioned the word momentum. Does that give Joe Gibbs Racing an advantage as we get closer to the chase? All four drivers are in. They're having success right now. Now they win at a track that will be in the chase later. Well, you want to think it will, but the truth is they need to run well now to get Kyle Busch in the chase. He has to make the top 30 in points. But what's different about this chase, and we've only had one year with it, is this is that knockout style chase. You can't be just good at the start, get a points lead, and ride it into Homestead. You're going to have to continue to work hard win races through each of the different sections, continuing to advance. Remember, every three races we eliminate cars, so you can't have a hiccup in the chase. And you also have to remember that every team is working. So we, the 48, for example, look how many wins he has and look how he ran today. Just because you're running now, well now, doesn't mean you're going to continue that. Every, all the teams around you are trying to get better. If you don't match that, you won't hold what you've got. So you can be as good as you want to be right now, but you better be good when it counts. You have to continue to improve and they continue to look impressive. The 46 of Michael Annette, the 83 of Matt DiBenedetto have both gone to the infield care, center to, infield care center to get medical treatment, and the 47 
of A.J. Allmendinger was getting some medical treatment at his hall. We noticed that it was a very difficult and strenuous race. We have more from New Hampshire coming up next. Welcome back to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Sprint Cup Series Racing from New Hampshire presented by Pixels. And you can see some inclement weather in the area. Our post-race show had to relocate because of that lightning and inclement weather in the area. So they are going to be coming to you in just a few moments after they get set up. We want to take a look back at what took place today. Carl Edwards brought the field to the green flag initially, but it was strategy that played off early with Brad Keselowski coming to pit road. Yeah, the toughest part about Loudon is when do you pit? There seems to be a, a bunch of cautions and you want to stay out, you want to come in, but you need to be careful because if you stay out and then the green flag runs a long time, you could be in trouble. And talk about beating and banging, we saw it a lot today. Yeah, early in the race, people running into each other. Uh, typical slick racetrack, everybody trying to gain spots. Got real physical early. And it got warm especially under the hood of Alex Bowman's number seven. Had a right front tire go down. They changed that tire, and as he was coming off of pit road, the new tire wheel and everything caught fire. Kevin Harvick with a strong move to the lead here underneath uh, Keselowski. It's the first time we really saw Harvick show strength and take the lead. It was really all Kyle Busch as he led 95 laps today. He pitted under green. That was on lap 244. At the time, we thought, I don't know if this is going to work out for you, but after this move, it definitely worked out for him. Yeah, Kyle Busch knew he had to get himself on lap. He fought hard to get to the lucky dog position. But you see here a really strong move around Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick. A caution comes a couple laps later. Everyone on the lead lap pits. Kyle Busch assumes the lead, but not only did he get a little lucky get the lead, he kept the lead. Fought hard in this restart and ran a great 44 laps to the finish. It was great on the restart and was able to hang on for the win. His third in the last four races and his second win at New Hampshire as he hoist the lobster in victory lane. Seven different tracks that will take us to the chase. The next one up is the very flat oval the historic Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
Yeah, not only is Indianapolis a huge prestigious event to try to win the Brickyard 400, but we'll be heading there with a new rules package. It'll be a high drag package. No one in this garage here has a lot of time on that package. It'll be interesting to see who can adapt. From there, we got a whole variety of tracks before we end up in Richmond and set the chase. And that's what we want. We want variety. The best teams will stand tall. The more stuff you throw at them, the better the best teams are. Tracks like Watkins Glen still up, which could be a variable, a, a, a wild card race potentially for someone to break into this chase grid. Yeah, when I look at, you know, everyone on the left side of the grid with a win, they're feeling good about it. Kyle Busch, he has worked to go in the top 30, but he's doing a very good job at it. Jamie McMurray and Jeff Gordon, they got a 70-point gap. They're feeling okay, but it gets really close behind them. Casey Kane, Ryan Newman, Paul Menard, all trying to points their way in. But you got to be careful, because if someone new wins a race or Kyle Bish gets in that top 30, that starts eliminating positions that you're going to get in with the points. Yeah, and you would expect that Kyle Busch is going to break into that top 16 and move one of those drivers out that's already in there based on points. But how many people will end up getting another win to get in there? And, and will there be probably 12 or excuse me, 12 winners and four people that get in in the chase based on points? Well, I think you don't want to assume any of the above because we've seen that there's opportunity for guys to win anywhere we go. A.J. Allen McDinger, I'm sure he has Watkins Glen circled, but we just saw the variety of racetracks. I mean, when you start talking about going to Bristol, Indianapolis, Michigan, and then throw the new rules package on top of all that, we have low darn force at Darlington, high drag in Indianapolis. Those are so many open-ended questions that I wouldn't want to hang my hat on points racing my way into the chase. How much do you learn from this race today as we come back to the chase, are you looking at your notebook and saying, okay, it was a multiple groove racetrack today. Can I make that work and use that as far as coming back in the chase when we come back in September? Well, if you're Kyle Busch and his team, you feel like you learned a lot. You also are always trying to pay attention to how the racetrack changes. You know, we saw cars running on the bottom. We saw them running on the top. A lot of different grooves here. But you're always trying to build on your notebook. You're trying to learn what it works. Like you see Austin Dillon trying to make the apron here make it work you're always trying to build that notebook stronger so what worked what didn't work if you're jimmy johnson and his team finishing 22nd you got to regroup you got to start over if you're kyle bush and his team you believe you have what you need you just got to make small improvements multiple grooves four wide we saw today and a lot of beating and banging to get into those positions we mentioned the storm passing through north of the track here. It has cleared the grandstands out, so the fans have been able to get out of the grandstands before any type of rain has come, but lightning in the area. Well, NASCAR coverage will continue next week from Indianapolis, Sunday on NBCSN at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's Sprint Cup Series racing from the Brickyard, presented by Golden Corral. And Saturday on NBC at 3 p.m. Eastern, Xfinity Series, Lily Diabetes, 250 NASCAR. It's on NBCSN and NBC seven days a week. Coming up next, complete post race coverage continues on NBCSN here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway with Chris Devota, Kyle Petty, and Frank Stoddard. An incredible day for Joe Gibbs Racing, especially the driver of the 18, Kyle Busch, back in victory lane. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.